here live edition of Free Talk Live with Mark and Johnson. <laughs> 855-450-3733. So, Johnson, I've got a whole a, a, a vast cornucopia of uh, show prep today. Okay. A, a plethora. And upon hearing you come in and <laughs> give me your show prep, I am prepared to uh, put it all on hold. And just to hear what this article is. Now, first, I'm going to tell you some of the things I've got. Sure. Porn actors must wear protective goggles during shoots <laughs> in California. <laughs> the military apparently sent anthrax all over the world to a bunch of random labs. I actually posted about that. <laughs> the, a red state has uh, a, a veto override proof uh, death penalty repeal um, and a bunch of other stuff. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. Um, but apparently there are six lessons one learns by getting paid to troll people on the internet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I have to know. All right. Well, that, this article is by Nicholas Pell, who, uh, has been writing for cracked.com for quite some time. So I'm sure I'm going to have to be careful as I read this article. Oh, yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> So apparently, this is uh, by Nicholas Nicholas Pell. Apparently, my first column at Cracked uh, really rustled some jimmies. He says, "That's cool. I've been rustling jimmies for a long time, and I'm pretty good at it." That I'm saying rustling jimmies is probably rustling a few jimmies right now. In fact, and while I never thought I would earn a handsome living at it, that's just what I've been doing for going on six years now. Not much amazes me anymore, but I'm still always a bit shocked at people who don't understand how the internet operates. So out of sheer graciousness, I decided to give you all some insight into how trolling the internet for fun and profit actually works. Hopefully this will help you to craft better indignant comments in the future. So, number six. I always tell the truth even when I troll. Yes, I'm trolling you. No, that doesn't mean that I don't more or less mean every word that I'm writing, or that I say in my writing. But I punch up my style and put it in the way that is most likely to irritate people who deserve to be irritated. And if I'm irritating you, that probably means you're an uptight square just begging to be messed with. Okay. When I probably am. <laughs> when I'm writing... I literally take time to determine how I can phrase something in a way that will provoke the greatest amount of butthurt from sea to si shining sea. See, I don't feel that way, but I, I, I do often try to be as glib as possible when <laughs> I am um, saying something. I want to say it in a way that is uh, frank and doesn't use you know language to distort what it is that I'm saying. Sure. And I think that so many things, like from... Uh, everything in our uh, culture is uh, they, people use the term politically correct right um but it's on both sides of the aisle this oh, yeah. isn't democrats this isn't republicans this is like i i believe that uh, for instance when people use the term um uh, social justice that really what they're doing is uh, using a cover term for stealing from people i don't like right right that, that's what i i think that means um, but at the same time, um, I think that, you know, when you're talking about, uh, you know, people will, you know, the right will use terminology that can just as easily be explained without sort of flowery language. Right. For instance, when uh, they talk about liberating Iraq, you mean dropping bombs and killing people's children. Is that what you mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, like, I prefer glib um, in that way. Well, you know, I guess there's something to be said for not being too hyperbolic. I mean, you know, like when you're. Uh, you know, I guess when you're talking to people, you don't want to just use language that's like too extreme. I guess if if it's not if it goes beyond being factual and honest, if you're you know just saying something so extreme to get a rise out of someone that you've gone beyond the point of where what you're saying is no longer even factual because you're just too too far out there. Indeed. So, um, so he says. On the other hand, irritating the hell out of the eas easily irritated also allows me to sift through the chaff of the internet for the wheat who actually get the joke. That mostly seems to be other people who like to be irritating, or people who like watching handsome men such as myself irritate people. It's kind of hilarious for all of us, and kind of a bummer that you're not in on the joke. Number five. Negative feedback and hate reading gets you paid. 
I've never done a pay-per-click gig, but I've had a few gigs that paid me extra for reaching a certain page view threshold. Either way, at this point in my career, I am now a known quantity. Editors know when they can rely on me to produce a stream of punters, giving them a sweet giving them the sweet page views and click-throughs that they need to pitch to potential advertisers. So basically, every time you read my article, comment on it, and or share it with your friends while telling them what a dick I am, you're helping me buy another pair of $400 jeans. Thanks for that. <laughs> That's uh, it, It's amusing. I, I had that feeling one time not too long ago. Um, it's been some time, but there's a couple of articles out there written about uh, how homeschooling is illiberal illiberal was the uh, terminology used by this person who not only doesn't like homeschoolers but likes to make up stupid new words themselves <laughs> right and um like i i it was so this this article was so outrageous written in such a way <laughs> that i was just i mean everybody who reads it is like are you effing kidding me right. this is this is this is stupid this is crazy <laughs> right and they're just outraged by what this person says but that article got some reads yeah, right <laughs> like, right i don't know if that person i hope they didn't use their real name right. because <laughs> it's the libel to have gotten lynched right but man they got some reads yeah so he says, oh, what's that? You're unfollowing me because of my article? Congratulations. No one gives a flip because <laughs> 20 other people just followed, uh, and you'll be back the second the website runs a picture of cleavage again. Unfollowing a page on Facebook is like voting. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> he says, unfollowing a page on Facebook is like voting libertarian. It might make you feel better at night, but at the end of the day, you've accomplished precisely nothing. That's okay. You don't. You precise. <laughs> you you vote. You you uh you accomplish precisely nothing by uh, voting Democrat or Republican it, too. That's true. And so um you know I mean all but, these. But again, he's he knows exactly what argument uh, what audience to target. Who's yeah. going to like come and be like, what you can't? Yeah, well, you, you said this about this. You know, like. More, more likely than not, it's going to be libertarians who get yep. upset about yep. a comment like that. Sure. <laughs> and which leads him to number four. I have vast experience being a dick. <laughs> I don't know what you and your friends were like in high school and college, but mine were constantly cutting up and busting balls. We messed with each other unmercifully. So in addition to being a huge dick by nature... I'd prefer the term Richard. Richard. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, guilty... And growing up in a place where everyone is kind of a Richard, uh, New England, I also had to hold my own against some some of the biggest uh, JOs of their generation. Truth told, being uh, a Richard is one of those things that I'm good at. And if you know anything about economics, you know that society benefits the most from people doing what they do best. <laughs> <laughs> You keep making my lattes, and I'll keep being a jerk on the internet and wearing outfits that cost more than your car. I don't know why you would do that. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, okay. <laughs> well, if he's making money at it, then that would be the reason. I guess. I mean, uh, you know, when I when I hear him uh, prattle on about this, uh, you know, his his expensive taste in clothing. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> he sounds like he's wasting money. <laughs> like, I. We have a classification of men that spend way too much money on clothing, sir, and they put things in their mouths that is laughable. <laughs> what did you say about Richard? Anyway, it's not journalism, number three. It's not journalism, so stop asking if this is journalism. He says, I hope you're sitting down. Journalism doesn't exist anymore. It hasn't for at least 10 years now. The closest thing we have to journalism is now agenda-driven propaganda dressed up as objective, hard-hitting news. I don't know if that's true. I will well, say that Appropriate it, timing for the music it, when it, I said objective, hard-hitting news. <laughs> I'd say that we have largely what he's talking about, but there's still some journalism out there. Ah, uh, yeah, it's debatable. 855-450-3733. What do you think? Do you think there's journalism still exist? 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. The vet 
had them on antibiotics as well as steroids. Nothing worked. The vet had given him a cortisone. The vet prescribed an antihistamine. The vet thought that Molly was just old. Probably three to four hundred dollars every four months. At least five thousand dollars in vet bills. All total, twenty-seven hundred dollars in doggy fees, and all it took was one container of Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Eight five nine four two eight one thousand. The omega three fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. The ingredients are what the veterinarian said he was lacking. Within two days, his scratching, it seemed to go away. After five weeks, her fur is beautiful. She is totally happy. Molly's gotten this puppy look. Her coat has sheen. Oh, yes. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. My vet was completely blown away. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Free Talk Live. Hey guys. Hi, Cheryl. Um, I kind of stumbled onto you. I drive home from work on a Saturday night and uh, heard you guys the first couple times I heard you and I thought, what obnoxious jerks have they got on the radio? <laughs> you sound like my now. wife. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, I grew up very conservative, grew up in Kansas, moved to Florida, um, but you guys have really opened my mind. Um, well, now, wait a minute. You opened your mind. We just gave you a few I don't uh, know. Tips. You know, like I said, I, I was... It was more of a like a car wreck. I couldn't turn away. Really? You know, I had to listen to you because I'm like, I cannot believe what these guys are saying. And, uh, you know, so I was a little, you know, I'm 43. You know, my daughter's 24. She'll be 25 this year. And, mm-hmm. you know, it was kind of the stuff that was coming out of her mouth that I just took as kind of a, just a crazy youth thing. But um, you guys have, have absolutely opened my mind. Free Talk Live. Seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. If you want to use Skype, we make that easy for you too. All you have to do is uh, use is send a, a contact request to username lrn.fm. That's as in Liberty Radio Network. lrn.fm, and well, we'll approve it in relatively short order. May, might take me as long as a segment to see it, but I'll I'll take care of it. Then you can call in, and usually you sound a bit better on Skype. So the username's lrn.fm, and the telephone number, the regular old old fashioned way, toll free is eight fifty five. 450 free. 
I booked some plane tickets today to head out to Las Vegas for Freedom Fest. Um, it's going to be at the Planet Hollywood July 8th through the 11th. This year, obviously. <laughs> it's the world's largest gathering of free minds, and it's going to be the best yet because they have a historic debate between Paul Krugman and Steve Moore, and it's going to be well worth seeing. So Krugman is the New York Times columnist, and Moore is the Wall Street Journal, Journal columnist, and they're going to debate austerity versus stimulus, red state versus blue state, flat tax versus progressive tax. There really aren't too many people in the world more qualified to take either side on this. So I'm excited. Um, and you can sign up uh, there. There's going to be several several debates. Um, Mark Skousen's going to be debating, um, shoot, the name is slipping humor, uh, on yeah, libertarian state or no state at all. So that should be pretty exciting, too. Mm -hmm. I intend to, uh, to to go see that one. Peter Thiel will be there. G Steve Forbes, John Mackey, uh, Dinesh D'Souza, Glenn Beck. It's a star study. So you've reverted back to Thiel. Have we, decided, have we, have we <laughs> determined the pronunciation on this yet? I'll ask him when I get there. How's that? <laughs> Do that. <yeah. laughs> Is it Thiel or Teal? Freedomfest.com. And uh, that's July 8th through the 11th. Go sign up there. Click that you heard Free Talk Live. That way we get credit for it, please. Or give them a call at 855-850-FREE. I know that's like our number, 855-850-FREE. Or you can give us a call at 855-450-FREE and talk what talk about what you want to talk about. So, going on, how to get paid trolling? Yeah, sure. We were talking about how the fact that journalism doesn't exist anymore. Okay. You were arguing this. Uh, he says he says here, the closest thing we have to journalism is now agenda-driven propaganda dressed up as objective, hard-hitting news. And yes, this includes your favorite muckraking work over at Mother Jones or whatever. Journalism has died a pretty sad death. And yeah, we're all kind of bummed about it. But don't hate the player. Hate the game. I didn't kill journalism, or at least I didn't kill it any more than any of you did. If you're terribly concerned about the death of journalism, get out there and do some. I'm sure that you will get literally scores of page views while the rest of the world is getting mad at me, sharing uh, rare Pepe memes and looking at GIFs of randomly bouncing breasts. <laughs> so Yeah, that's kind of what people do on the internet, right? Yep, it's pretty true. So he goes on to number two. I don't really read books much. I just watch a lot of wrestling. <laughs> he says, Writer, writers are supposed to read a lot. I don't. I get enough of that in college. I'm currently slogging through Stephen Adler's memoir. Sometimes I pick up a Hubert Selby novel or read uh, Bukowski's poetry. I really liked Robert Heinlein when I smoked way more pot. <laughs> Norman Mailer makes me laugh. Uh, and whenever I bother to pick up something he wrote, put simply, my reading tastes are actually my reading tastes when I actually bother to pick up a book are pretty pedestrian and predictable. Mostly, what I do is look at pictures of jeans and cars on Instagram and watch wrestling on the WWE Network. So, if you're looking to make sense of whatever the heck it is that I'm doing, it probably helps to know that I owe way more to Rick Rude than I do to I don't know Lester Bangs. Like I said, I'm not much of a reader. And number one, no, I am not going to stop writing. First of all, I'm pretty sure that whatever I wrote, put a bee in your bonnet, is literally is not literally the worst thing ever written. It's not even figuratively the worst thing that you've ever read. I didn't stop writing when I woke up to find every Pearl Jam fan in the world wanting to kill me, so the chances of me quitting writing because you write OMG, why you writer quit now, on, and he spells now N-A-O, mm -hmm. uh, on my Facebook page are slim to none. For the last six years, I've supported myself in one of the nation's most expensive cities doing nothing but writing. Well, it's a, it's a it's a nice claim, right? Like he's yeah. managed to pull it off. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it's done, frankly, but I guess it's just you just got to get the clicks, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he says basically for the last three years ago, I've basically had money coming out of my ears. Seriously, I just bought a five hundred dollar leather fanny pack from Japan. I am that. 
let's see. He's just got a lot of money. He's <laughs> like, I just have that much money to spend stuff on. Are you just this is, are you stumbling over all the cuss words? That yeah, are pretty much. In it's yes. just like a, you know, he's just bragging. He says this is de facto proof that I am literally, yes, literally, better at writing than approximately ninety five percent of people in the history of the universe who have called themselves writers. Oh, money doesn't matter. Say that's what I call a pretty cool story, bro. No whip on that frappuccino. No whip on that frappuccino, please. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, he just ended the article with some more trolling. So um, it, the six. I, I'm sorry, there were. I was expecting six reasons or something. That was the sixth reason. Okay, it went went by so quick for a cracked article. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta say, I mean, you know, he got our clicks and didn't even really deliver that long of an article. That's true. Really kind of stunned. Well, well, I think we just flew through it. I mean, we we, there was, we just allowed him to speak his particular trolling without uh, uh, arguing the points on this particular one. Well, I think we should uh, talk about the military accidentally shipping live anthrax to labs in nine states. <laughs> yeah. So I uh, I let him slide ahead. Um, this is what I was going to open with, and I think it's... Uh, I don't know if it's relevant to everybody's life in the sense that you're probably not going to get anthrax at your house. I certainly hope not. Hope not. But it sure does show incompetence. Like the only organization that we would think uh, is uh, capable of handling anthrax apparently isn't capable of handling anthrax. Here's a news flash. I didn't really think it was right. anyway. <laughs> but there are, you know, a lot of people out there. Perhaps even the lion's share of the people listening to this uh, the show on the radio who who are like, well, you know, anthrax is dangerous. We really can't let it be in the hands of anybody but the government, the most unaccountable and incompetent <laughs> organizational uh, system that we have found so far on planet Earth. And, like, you know, I think we'd be better off if we turned all the anthrax over to walmart or google or apple right like <laughs> there's so many liberals out there that quake in their boots about uh, the idea of the court the corporate the corporations right here's and another question why do we need like why are we storing a bunch of anthrax that would be another good question i don't know you got to have it to uh, um study and cure it sure if we needed uh, but how much do we actually need to do that i don't know the seems answer like to that. they had a whole bunch that's what? probably why they're sitting into the labs right <laughs> maybe i don't know well, the Defense Department accidentally sent live anthrax to labs in nine states and South Korea and is working uh, with the Centers for Disease Control to contain it. The I mean, the only thing that Wednesday. would make this worse is if they were like, oh, we accidentally sent some to North Korea. <laughs> oh, Sorry, guys. Uh-oh. This is from thehill.com. Looks pretty legit, man. This isn't some kind of troll. 855-450-3733. What do you think? What else should we trust the government with? Nuclear weapons? The death penalty? 855-450-3733. Competent boobs. <laughs> Free Talk Live. Are you suffering from EP? The symptoms include fraudulent charges to your credit card. Your subway card says it's empty, but you bought it yesterday. Someone's been in your hotel room, but the desk clerk says they only show you entering the room. These are signs of EP. Electronic pickpocketing. Payment cards, transit cards, even hotel room keys. Use a radio chip so you can just wave your card at the register, the turnstile, or your hotel room door. But what's convenient for you is also convenient for thieves. Waving scanners to electronically pickpocket you without even touching you. The good news is there's a cure. ID Stronghold has created leather wallets and clutches that have built-in EP protection. Layers of shielding material cleverly concealed in a beautiful leather wallet that stops the symptoms of EP. Go to IDStronghold.com now and get the cure. IDStronghold.com. Warning, ID Stronghold wallets could lead to feelings of safety and security, comfort in crowds, and euphoria. If you experience these emotions, immediately inform your friends and family about IDStronghold.com so they can feel better too. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot reach time into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait, no. Now. Wait a minute. Oh, hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? 
for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Due to an upturn in the economy, Main Street Business Loans has pre-approved the release of millions of dollars in small business funding. Your business may already be pre-approved to receive up to $250,000. We've sent out millions of pre-approval letters. We see the economy growing, and our underwriters believe now is the time to invest in your business so you can grow faster and make more money. And we're prepared to give you up to $250,000 to do it. Your funds can be available in five days. There are no application fees, no annual fees, just quick access to up to $250,000. If your business did not receive your approval letter to get up to $250,000, call Main Street Business Loans Approval Desk now. 800-430-4505-800-430-4505-800-430-4505. That's 800-430-4505. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. You can call in and talk about whatever's on your mind here on this live edition of Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Johnson. 855-450-FREE. Talking about the situation where apparently the military, the Pentagon, has uh, shipped anthrax around all over the place, basically. Basically, the plague, like the modern, you know, basically be the closest thing that we could get to a modern plague is if <laughs> anthrax got out. Well, I mean, it's not good, uh, but um, I suppose there's worse things that could get out. Um, but, I mean, anthrax, cows have that, right? Mm, I think it can be made or to grow. It can grow on cow. I mean, it's just, I don't think it's one, one of those things that exists very much anymore. You what, know? One would assume if the Pentagon sends it, then it's weaponized anthrax, too. Right, exactly. Which would be even worse. The Department of Defense is collaborating with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in their investigation of the inadvertent transfer of samples containing Whoops. live uh, bac Bacillus anthracus. Um, also known as anthrax, from a DOD lab in Dugay, Utah, to labs in nine states, says Army Colonel Steve Warren, a Pentagon spokesperson. There's no known Gosh. risk. <laughs> yeah. We didn't mean to send it to the wrong places. <laughs> right. I mean, I get that this isn't that big of a deal, right? Like, it's probably nobody's going to be killed by this. But what this does is this illustrates in a very palpable and easy to understand fashion why you should not advocate ever for the government to do anything. At this point, we, I mean, you know, look, if this was done by any other organization, people, oh people yeah. would be hollering from the rooftops. So because it's the government, it's just like, oh, well, you know, they're stupid. What it's, can we do? It's like, you know, the, 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 the mentally disabled guy and the family, you know, does something silly. Everybody covers for him. 
There's no known risk to the general public, and there's no suspected or confirmed cases of anthrax infection in potentially exposed lab workers. The DOD lab was working as part of a DOD effort to develop a field-based test to identify biological threats. Here's a biological threat. The Department of Defense. (laughs) Out of an abundance of caution, the Department of Defense has stopped the shipment of this material from its labs pending completion of the investigation. It's uh, unclear as to whether anyone was exposed to the live samples or whether (laughs) um, they've uh, been quarantined for treatment. So we don't even get to know that. The Defense Department official said um, said on background that the anthrax samples was prepared at the Dugay Army facility as a part of research, a routine research, then set sent to the labs. All the samples were supposed to be dead or inactive. Whoops. Yeah. The labs were in Texas, Maryland, Wisconsin, Delaware, New Jersey, Tennessee, New York, California, and Virginia. Yep, yep, I got blue states, I got red states. There's no conspiracy here. Um, Warren later said that a sample was also sent overseas to the joint United States Forces Korea portal and integrated threat recognition program at Asan Air Base in South Korea. There's no known risk to the general public and no personnel have shown See, any I wonder, signs. I wonder how far that is from like the border of North Korea. Like could like ground troops in North Korea like attack and capture that sample and you know like just that type of thing. It's like, that's a pretty risky, scary mistake to have live anthrax that close to North Korea. I'm sh- Yeah, it's not a good thing. I'm sure there's all kinds of bad things we wouldn't want them getting a hold of that are relatively close. China could give them all kinds of things that we don't want them to have, too. Sure. So, yeah. China, North, North Korea is an ally last I checked, though. You know, so. What's that? I said China is still an ally last North I checked. North Korea is ch- an ally of China, too. Well, yeah. So it, I'm just saying they're an ally of ours, so it takes some pretty, you know. Yeah, China's. Um, I mean, China, China keeps, providing you know anthrax to North Korea would be probably considered an act of war. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> um, but where did where did North Korea get the ability to uh, set off a nuclear weapon? Do they actually have that ability? That's the claim. It's a claim. Okay. Well, I don't think there's any proof of that. All this, right. Well, I would juncture. have to. I'd have to uh, dig a little further. As all, uh, at this point, I thought North Korea was nuclear. No. So, as far as I know, no, they're not. Okay. So, going on, a lab in Or Maryland, maybe they are, and they just certainly don't have the capability of delivering a nuke anywhere. I think the delivery is a real issue. Right. A lab in, North, uh, in, in Maryland first notified the Pentagon on May 22nd in the late evening that it had received a live sample. The Pentagon then informed the CDC on May 23rd. <laughs> I wonder how, how did they discover that? Like, what's this? Oops. <laughs> They're a lab. They test things. <laughs> Well, the news got out. It only took them five days to uh, let us know. So far, the only live sample um, has been found in Maryland. The number of uh, affected labs could grow since the original lab has already turned over some of their anthrax sample to other facilities. So there you go. Your government is uh, completely incompetent. <laughs> they, I, I, I think that this story is important for just this reason, that... You understand that whatever it is that you turn over to them, you must consider it important if you're turning it over to the government. Well, there's not much more important that I can come up with than live anthrax samples. And they accidentally sent them to labs they weren't supposed to send them to. At least they didn't just go send them to random addresses. I'll give you that. But maybe that's next week's project. (laughs) Delivering pizza to a wrong house. (laughs) There's some anthrax. Whoops. Wait, you didn't order anthrax with your anchovies? (laughs) I, I I just don't know. I mean, I, I, it's stories like this that had converted me from the sort of small government guy to saying that, well, we're going to need to have competition in the area of governance. The reason is, is because if you give an organization a monopoly, monopolies do two things generally. They provide bad customer service and high prices. Nobody's going to argue with me that the government is high priced. Like everybody says, yeah, man, it takes some more money than um, anybody else to, you know, build that thing or do that stuff. But it's really great because they can steal that money from other people. Well, I get it. And that's a real advantage if you really want a project done is to steal your neighbor's money. I get it. But let's not forget who you're turning over that project to. You're turning it over to a group of people that send live anthrax through the mail. And that ain't so great. That's the story in a nutshell.
these people are incompetent, and we keep on entrusting them with new, more important tasks. They hold the nuclear codes. Oh, I, I guess I should play Ian for a second, devil's advocate. What do you mean we? <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> well, there's. I'm forced into it, whether we, uh, like, they <laughs> are entrusted true. with this anthrax, whether I want them to be entrusted or not. Right. So, you know, we, the human beings... <laughs> are entrusting the, uh, the 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 U.S. government with this anthra- anthrax, whether we want to or not. We're forced into it, right. sort of by just this majority thing that goes on here in the government. Well, I, I mean, I get how people talk about when we when we talk about the Second Amendment. You're like, well, what do you want everybody to have a nuclear weapon? No, <laughs> I don't want everybody to have a nuclear weapon. Frankly, I would prefer nuclear weapons not exist. However. At this point in time, they do, and these numbers are held by organizations, solely by organizations at this point, organizations of human beings at least, um, that are the same organizational type as the United States government who sent this anthrax around. Now, I'm not saying that this, this is one incident, that this should be it for them. I'm saying this crap happens all the time. We're just getting a glimpse now and then. They... Since they ha- don't have the uh, the responsibility, they're not going to be incentivized to be responsible. Nobody's going to get fired over this. Yep. If they do get fired over, I-, I bet they can't even get fired over this. I doubt they're going to get fired over this. Like anybody who does this probably should be fired, and they should get a job doing something where they can be trusted more. Maybe a radio talk show host. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let's take the incompetent <laughs> boob that sent this out and make them a radio talk show host where they can't hurt anybody. But no. If somebody does get fired, though, it's n- certainly not going to be anybody who's like actually responsible or in any sort of power, whatever that organization is. They'll just find somebody to scapegoat. Well, it might be the person who actually licked the stamp and put it on the envelope. I don't know. There was, they're as responsible as anybody up the ladder, but nobody up the ladder is going to um, deal with it. I, I agree with that. 855-450-3733. What do you think? What should we do? 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Did you know that drinking pure, high alkaline water is one of the most important factors in maintaining high energy and vibrant health? Most experts agree that the water you drink should be at a pH level of 8 or higher. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops, available only at AlkaVision.com, combine a unique formula of only the most alkaline minerals. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops alkalize your water, ridding the body of harmful toxins, and helps you regain health and energy. Alkalizing your water by simply adding 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops helps Helps the body rid itself of acidic waste, increases oxygen content, and raises the pH of your body to healthy levels. And bacteria and viruses cannot survive in an alkaline high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops for only $29.95 at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 
FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Eight fifty five four fifty three. It's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. You can call in and talk about whatever's on your mind here on this live edition of Free Talk Live with Mark and Johnson. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. You know, you like to read bumper stickers on the back of people's cars. Everybody likes to do it. Well, you can reach lots of people with the ideas of liberty. From the back of your car with LibertyStickers.com. You can meet, reach thousands of people, tens of thousands if you drive a lot and you live in a big city, um, you know, just by putting on these bumper stickers. They're witty, poignant, pithy, and downright bombastic. Check them out at LibertyStickers.com. I like to just page through them. They have uh, some really great sayings there. Many of them created by uh, our... Uh, our, our, our friend Scott Horton over at, uh, he used to do anti-war radio. Now he does the Scott Horton show, which is essentially the same show. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out, libertystickers.com. They are great. So, Nebraska's death penalty repealed with a veto override majority here. Nebraska became the first conservative state in more than 40 years to abolish the death penalty on Wednesday when lawmakers boldly voted 30 to 19 to override the governor's veto. There are 10 inmates in Nebraska's death row. The 11th died this week. But the state has not executed anyone since 1997. And only this is like New Hampshire. Nobody's been right. executed in a very long time, too. And only recently ordered the drugs necessary to carry out a lethal injection. It's the 19th state to abolish capital punishment. Lawmakers across the political spectrum came together to pass a repeal bill three times. Governor Pete Ricketts, a first-term Republican, then vetoed the legislation on Tuesday. 30 senators were needed to override him. My words cannot express how appalled I am that we have just lost a critical tool to protect law enforcement and Nebraska families, Ricketts said in some pandering, smarmy plea. It's not based on fact at all. The override veto was preceded by hours of debate, with opponents and proponents quoting Bible passages and reading emails from constituents to support their position. You know, I don't think we should uh, pass this or veto it based on ancient texts or yeah. the emails of constituents. I, I mean, I'm sorry. You're supposed to be the leaders of men up there. You're so <laughs> have you talked to the average person recently? They're dumb. And I don't want to, you know, like when it comes down to it, I'm not really interested in emails from constituents. Those are not the good reasons to do this. There's all kinds of good reasons to abolish the death penalty in your state, but not, 
because of ancient texts and the average person's opinion. Well, why shouldn't government cater to people who think the most important thing in the world is who wins American Idol? Yeah, why shouldn't they? Indeed, well, that's what that's what it's <laughs> built to do. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Uh, let's go on here. Um, the death penalty in Nebraska is broken. It's time to repeal it, said uh, Senator Jeremy Nordquist, a Democrat who voted to end capital punishment. Senator Joni Craighead, who backed the death penalty, asked proponents to put themselves in the shoes of murder victims' families. This is always the one that you go with, murder victims' families. Well, I got news for you. Murder victims' families are drugged through the mud on multiple occasions by these appeals and all this stuff that goes with it. Consider for a second what it must be like to have appeal after appeal after pardon after clemency hearing, uh, you know, over the, the Supreme Court and all this stuff that goes on with death penalty cases, I would just love to know what's it like for the, you know, the guys that get life. The vast majority of them, in my experience, suck it up and take their life sentence and die in prison. Seriously, I spent eight and a half years in prison. I've met a lot of guys with life sentences. Mm -hmm. I met a guy one time um, who'd been in prison so long, he said that if they let him out, the first thing he'd do is uh, go to a post office, use his finger inside of his shirt to pretend he had a gun to rob it for one stamp. The reason he'd do a post office is he heard time was better in federal prison. Wow. So, yeah. yes, I mean, I have a reasonable idea of what we're talking about and the motivations of people here. Um, the... The death penalty, it doesn't come into people's minds, generally, when th before they commit their crime. Yeah, there are some people, I think, uh, I think like Dahmer or something like that, picked states where they didn't have a death penalty so that he ha wouldn't have to worry about the death penalty. Huh. But he got it anyway, didn't he? <laughs> and this is, this is the thing, is, is I feel like you can trust the inmates in the prison to hand out the death penalty to the worst cases. Frankly, I, can, I do. Um, there's, you know... It, it happened to Donald McDougal in Florida. It happened to uh, this uh, uh, Dahmer fella. It's likely it would likely be happened to this uh, the, the Boston bomber, um, whatever Sarnev, yeah. Sarnev, Zokar, Zokar Sarnev, whatever his name is. Um, it likely happened to him if they let him out in general population. Tell you what, go ahead and put him in a federal uh, maximum security federal prison in general population in the Northeast. We'll just see right. how that goes for him. Right. I suspect they'd bash his head in with something metal relatively quickly. So, uh, you know, this, this death penalty thing, I get how we might be worried about the family. I understand. But you're dragging them through all kinds of appeals and that kind of thing. Not to mention the taxpayer has to pay for these appeals. It's significantly less costly. If you're a conservative, costs for the government matter. It's significantly less costly to... Put somebody in prison and feed them bologna sandwiches for the rest of their life. Life. Oh, by the way, let them have cigarettes. Let them have, uh, y y you know, right. let them have uh, access in the canteen to five-hour energy drinks and all kinds of things that they can overdose on. Let them do that if that's what they want to do. Uh, don't protect these people from their own actions. But, uh, you know, it's it's just ridiculous to spend these millions of dollars on all these appeals. Well, the problem is, is it's you know a government system, so it's going to be all these different interests. You're going to have all these different interests sure. that are going to you know, oh they can't you know like there's going to be people who are like let them kill themselves you know if that's what they want to do, but there's also going to be people like oh human life they must be protected. You got to put them in a straight you know it's like it's got to be there's going to be different interests at play That's with every absolutely you know, like, are that's just my you know, application some um, people believe that everyone you know if you, if you are you know if you you don't have the right to make that choice you know you you must be protected from yourself at that point because you're obviously crazy and it's like you know some point there's life is not valuable anymore you know like it's like okay you know if your life is going to be just miserable and you know that for the rest of your life you know maybe you don't want to li keep living you know that's why a lot of people, that's why the argument is for, you know, over medical stuff, over, med you know, people who are extremely, extremely sick who want to end their lives, you know, but uh, people can't even agree on that because there are certain religions where it's like, oh, no, if you kill yourself, you're, you know, if you have somebody kill you, you're never going to, 
uh, get access to eternal, uh, you know, whatever it heaven is. and, and uh, Eden after whatever. <laughs> well, certainly there are lots of people that disagree on what's going to happen after we we die. But I, let's leave this. Let's leave that out of it. Sure. Um, let's just go ahead and say, okay, it's significantly less costly to put somebody in prison for life than it is to try to take them through all the appeals for a death penalty. The only thing the death penalty, the only person from what who I can tell, the only people I can tell that it truly benefits are the prosecutors uh, who get big names off of it. I suppose you could make the claim that the victims, um, you know, have some kind of benefit or something. But I, I think that that's outweighed by whatever it is they'd have to deal with in um trying to put somebody through the, you know, the 10 years that it takes to, to finally kill them. Um, not to mention the fact that, uh, you know, as a deterrent, this is not really shown to be particularly effective, if effective at all. Um, when you're talking about, uh, you know, states that kill the most people, their crime rates aren't particularly low. Yeah, I mean, New mo- Hampshire hasn't had an execution in decades and its crime rate is significantly lower than Yeah, it's most funny. The, states. the biggest reasons that you hear for people if you talk to people who support the death penalty, the two things that they'll generally say are um well, we shouldn't be paying to keep these people in prison for the rest of their lives. You should just kill them. Well, that argument doesn't make any sense. That's just stupid because it well, costs more to kill them. That's one thing. And then the second argument that pe- most people make is that, well, we need to, you know, have a, something there, you know, the ultimate punishment to keep crime rates down. It's like, no, the death penalty doesn't affect rec- recidivism rates at all. So well, murderers you're also wrong there. Usually, get the death penalty are the least likely to recommit anyway. Um, to get the death penalty, yeah. Well, no, I mean murderers generally. Well, because most of the time it's a crime of passion. Yeah, I mean they're just they're yeah. not going to make that mistake again. Right. They've had to deal with uh, whatever the consequences are. Sure. They've spent plenty of time in jail and they're not interested any longer. I would suspect serial killers is some sort of a strange uh, mental illness as well that might come and go. I don't know. I mean, it's not like you're going to stop them with a, a serial killer with the death penalty, right? I mean, but, well, oh, oh sure dear, so they might put me to death instead of life yeah. in prison, right? And let's not forget, oh, you mean stop, like as in stop recidivism or whatever, or, or preventive, preten- yeah. preventative. Killing them certainly stops. Right. Them. There's no doubt about that. Right. But so does putting in prison for life. And no one's. We haven't even mentioned that life in prison may very well be a worse punishment. We don't really know. Right. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Your thoughts on the death penalty. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Watching the game again, I thought you were booking our vacation hotel. Done. What? We're staying at America's Best Value Inn, and I scored a triple play when I joined their free value club. Really? You get 15% off, a room upgrade, and late checkout when available, plus free Wi-Fi and continental breakfast at most of their 1,000 hotels. Wow, that really is a slam dunk. Uh, home run, honey. I think you mean home run. Score big this summer at America's Best Value Inn at abvi.com. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'd rather keep their clients in the dark. There are too many lawyer jokes to count. However, there are some lawyers with more noble intentions. At the Institute for Justice, we bring the light to our clients. We are a nonprofit public interest law firm with clear values and principles. At IJ, we fight for those whose most basic rights are denied by the government. Visit our website today at ij.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 
From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, May 28th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.71 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,188 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $239. Antiwar.com reports Saudi warplanes yesterday attacked the police headquarters in the Yemeni capital city of Sana'a, killing at least 45 people and wounding 100 others. The stricken area, presented as a special forces camp by some reports, was said to be used by the Shiite Houthis to try to organize local resistance against the remnants of the former Hadi government. At the time of the strike, hundreds of people, many of them civilians, were lined up at the warehouse near the headquarters for the distribution of arms. It was unclear what the the split was between civilians and combatants. A second series of Saudi strikes in the Hijab province killed about 40 others, mostly civilians in that case. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports the Nebraska legislature abolished the use of capital punishment Wednesday by voting to override Governor Pete Ricketts' veto of a bill to repeal the death penalty. The legislature voted 30 to 19 in a bipartisan move to override the veto, which he signed Tuesday. At least 30 votes were needed to override the veto. Ricketts is a staunch supporter of the death penalty, saying it strengthens public safety and prevents convicted murderers from being released into the public. He tweeted that he was appalled by the vote, saying, while the legislature has lost touch with the citizens of Nebraska, I will continue to stand with Nebraskans and law enforcement on this issue. The legislature approved the bill three times, each time with a veto-proof majority before it was sent to Ricketts. Nebraska's unicameral legislature is majority Republican, and the repeal makes it the first conservative state to end capital punishment in more than 40 years. 18 other states and Washington, D.C. have also banned the death penalty. The death penalty has been undergoing some reconsideration in the U.S. within the last several months after states started running out of the traditional drugs used for lethal injection. The Supreme Court is set to decide whether midazolam, an anti-anxiety drug and depressant, violates the Eighth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which bans cruel and unusual punishment. It's the first time the Supreme Court has revisited the issue of lethal injection since 2008, when justices upheld the use of a three-drug lethal injection cocktail. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the U.S. military mistakenly sent live anthrax bacteria to laboratories in nine U.S. states and a U.S. airbase in South Korea after apparently failing to properly inactivate the bacteria last year. The Pentagon said there was no known suspected infection or risk to the public, but four civilians have been started on preventative measures called post-exposure prophylaxis, which usually includes the anthrax vaccine, antibiotics, or both. Jason McDonnell, a spokesman for the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, said the four face minimal risk, adding they were doing procedures that sent the agent into the air. When anthrax becomes airborne, it can cause a deadly illness called inhalation anthrax that occurred in 2001 when anthrax sent through the U.S. mail to government and media targets killed five people. In this case, the anthrax, which was initially sent from a Utah military lab, was meant to be shipped in an inactive state as part of efforts to develop a field Base test to identify biological threats. Pentagon spokesman Colonel Steve Warren said, out of an abundance of caution, the Defense Department has stopped the shipment of this material from its labs pending completion of an investigation. The CDC has launched its own investigation of the mishap. The mishap comes 11 months after the CDC, one of the government's top civilian labs, similarly mishandled anthrax. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
According to a new report, the vast majority of Americans simply want to be safe, happy, rich, comfortable, entertained, thin, and romantically fulfilled. The Onion spoke to a few of the survey's respondents who also claimed they want to be healthy, fulfilled, and successful, and energized at all times. All I want is a low-stress job, a nice house, affordable health care, and low gas prices, you know? It'd be nice to have a 35-hour work week, delicious food that's actually good for me, strong friendships, and free high-speed Wi-Fi wherever I go. I think I'm entitled to wealth, love, cheap education, a fair legal process. According to the survey, 63% of all Americans want their summers to be hot but not too hot, 85% want the government to stop all wars and world hunger and make quick and easy weight loss possible, 93% want to be emotionally satisfied, plus a soulmate, unconditional love from their parents, and a big happy dog. This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450 free if you want to be able to remember it easily. Um, but, you know, that comes out to 855-450-3733. The, uh, the Skype username is lrn.fm if you want to call us on Skype and sound a bit better. It's Mark with you. And Johnson. Let's get right into those calls. Uh, we'll start with Scott in California listening to uh, 1140. KVLI. Scott, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, gentlemen. How's it going? All's well. Uh, we're good. I um, wanted to contribute to, to the discussion. And uh, um, basically, I think it's gotten down to where death, the death penalty is just more, more of anything, an extension of life than it is a, 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 an expiration of life because of the, uh, the numerous and numerous amounts of, of appeals that you get. Yeah. Um, it, has, it has basically crippled California. Um, because of all the, uh, not just because of death row inmates, but just because of the overcrowding in prisons, lifers, and just, just the lifers alone. Um, and, and when you're talking about the cost, it's like you've got some of these lifers, or even or even guys on death row that, that are that are um, terminally ill, they're oh, stuck yeah. in the state drive for health care. Why, why won't they allow the family to take them home? If, if the family can take care of them and, 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 and care for them, it would be a less burden to the state. And yet, at the same time, you're going to let this guy, yes, he's committed a crime. I get it. A horrible crime, however many decades ago. You know, I think if you went to the proper channels and, you know, got consent from the victim's family or whatnot to, to, to roll this all in and put a nice pretty pink bow as to why you're doing it, I think that that would be a nice a little bit of alleviation to this problem because I don't know if you heard about we had just back in November during the last election, we had a vote on a proposition called Prop 47 which was dubbed the Safer Schools, Safer Neighborhoods Bill. Uh -huh. And what it was supposed to do, it was supposed to allocate funds saved from, what it was was knocking down low-level uh, nonviolent crimes from a felony to a misdemeanor. Um, petty theft, gun theft, where any with a theft of any gun was a felony. Now the value of the gun, handgun, rifle, whatever, has to be in excess of $950 for it to be, con for it to be considered a felony. Um, the same thing with a theft of an automobile. If the automobile is less than 950 bucks, it's petty theft. It's not grand theft auto. And so you've got all these try all these um, all these potential solutions, or so you think, trying to trying to fix this problem of overcrowding, and it's just making it worse. Yeah, I, um, I think that uh, they used to do this, where they would release uh, inmates that were quite ill and uh, over to their families. I don't know that I would call it merciful or anything like that. I wouldn't call it that at all. Um, really what you're doing is, is you're just unloading a very expensive uh, problem onto somebody who can uh, handle it more cheaply. If the, if the oh, family has uh, somebody who's, you know, if somebody's an inmate is particularly sick, uh, then turning them over to the, uh, the family, well, you know, that's just, it makes things easier for everybody. I kind of have a notion, and maybe it's a ridiculous notion, but I feel like any sentence, if the sentence is longer than 25 years, that sentence doesn't make sense. 
You're at the point where it's just that's just ridiculous. Yeah, you're talking because, about an entirely different individual right. at that point. Right. I mean, their body has the cells in their body have replicated themselves several times right. over. Um, I mean, they're they're actually literally not the same person as they were. Or I must I almost feel like saying like, oh, let's just say, well, it's 21 years that it takes to for someone to go from you know being a zygote to being old enough to drink, you know, old enough where that's an age based <laughs> law. Let's say sentences can't be longer than 21 years because 21 years you're a different person. Period. I mean, it's not like anyone says to themselves, "Oh well, you know, I was I I wasn't going to do this when the death when I was facing the death penalty, but when I'm only facing doing 21 years in prison, well now I'll do it." Yeah. I mean, because 21, <laughs> you know, like convicts don't expect to. Most criminals, they're just they have these kind of brains. They don't expect to get caught anyway. Right. So therefore, the deterrents really aren't that effective. Yes, pe- well, keeping I- people in prison during their uh, peak crime years that's effective, but. You find 50-year-olds don't commit nearly as many crimes. Go ahead. And that's true. And that was a statistic that I was going to toss out there. But the problem is, is and that was the thing is that we were discussing. I'm, I'm taking some classes in school. I'm done with pre-law. And uh, we were discussing early, early release. And the thing is, is that you're booting out these, these uh, misdemeanor, mis, you know, these, these repetitive uh, misdemeanor guys that are, you know, in their younger years. And they're coming right back in. And you have the seasoned veterans that have been there for 20 or 30 years, know the ropes, have gotten their, gotten their wits about them, uh, in a matter of speaking. And yet they're, they are the least likely to be released on an early release from their, from their long term, but are the least likely to reoffend. Yep. That's it. It's the truth. I mean, you've got these non-violent offenders that have these long sentences, and in some cases, I mean, that's the place to start, right? The ones that there's actually no victim, um, and then you know, work your way down because it seems like after twenty, like like you know, twenty-one years was thrown out there, fine by me. Twenty-five, if that makes you happy, rounding up. There's all these guys that are. It just doesn't make any sense, Scott. I do appreciate the the call. Thank you, sir. Thanks. 855-450-3733. 855-450-3733. I'd really like to hear your opinion. If yep. you have something else, um, some other you know point of view on this, I want to hear it. It's not like um, you know I'm I'm I, I get why people would want some you know the Snarnev guy. He's he's big in the news right mm-hmm. now. He just blew up. I don't know how many he was involved in blowing up how many people many people at the uh, uh, Boston Marathon there, and. You know, they gave him the death penalty. I didn't. I did not shed a tear when I heard that news. I'm against the death penalty, but for reasons that uh, you know are mostly financial, and in some cases philosophical. But I, you know, I, I it doesn't make me feel bad if this person goes gets the death penalty. Let's go to Jeff calling in on Skype. Our username is lrn.fm. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey guys, can you hear me? All right. Yep, sounds great. Okay. I'm an old guy, so Skype's kind of difficult for me to figure out. Hey, Looks like you got uh, it. Okay. I uh, was looking online, and I happened to trip across on YouTube a site that was uh, promoting citizen-funded elections. Okay. Uh, Tell me about that. I've been trying to figure out this whole election thing and what to propose. If we're going to have elections for these people that are going to call ourselves rulers, <laughs> then exactly how should we go about yeah. funding them? Because whatever we're doing isn't working very yeah, well. I'm also curious what that means, citizen-funded elections, because I'm th- well, kind of thinking to myself, like, aren't citizens funding the elections right now completely involuntarily? <laughs> well, kind of. They. I don't know how weighted the study was, but according to what I watched on the web, Princeton did a study – on uh, items where the general populace would have an opinion and want a law written, um, ver- going anywhere from absolutely no one wanted it to happen versus everyone in the country wanted a certain law to be written. Uh, basically, they had a, uh, a line uh, on this graph that showed that no matter what the populist view is on something, you had about a 30% chance of a law being written. Then they... Really? Okay. Yeah, then they took uh, that same line and they showed the percentage of uh, a law being written based on big interest, uh, special interest groups, lobbyists uh, promoting a certain idea, whether the public wanted it or not. And uh, according to the survey uh, or the study, it showed about a, a, a high 70s to 80 percent chance of uh, a law being written. If lobbyists uh, wanted it. Right. So the general idea is uh, if you took the big interest out of uh, basically just take lobbying and, and special interest out of politics, the money, and had citizen-funded elections 
which I kind of really like you guys. I kind of thought that that's what we already had because you had that little box to check if you wanted to. Uh, yeah, give a dollar. Tribute. Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, but if you were able to uh, take that 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 portion, which would you know be a big deal, but take all these money interests out of elections that you would actually have the citizens being represented. I wanted to figure out if you guys had any opinion on how that worked into the libertarian principle. Well, uh, I didn't read what you said here, but I um, read you know what the, the the article you're talking about. But I have some ideas on um, you know the funding of elections. If you um, if you let rich people uh, fund whichever candidates they want indiscriminately, you would get something extraordinarily similar to uh, what we have today without all the Byzantine rules on super PACs, right? Like what we have today is something like a plutocracy, and there's not much we can do about it. Um, if you remove all of the funding from, um, you know, like you just say, no one's allowed to spend any money on an election. Well, then the incumbents would be reelected probably at a higher rate, which we're already at uh, more than 90 percentile for incumbents being reelected, even at a higher rate. I want to talk to you about it just a little bit more, if I could, Jeff. 855-450-3733. Your thoughts on funding elections. 855-450-FREE. Warning. If you've recently declared bankruptcy, you're going to want to change the station. Because there's an alternative to bankruptcy, and it's faster than you'd ever think possible. But if you've already declared bankruptcy and have missed this opportunity, you'll want to change the station now. Here it is. Right now, the company that has resolved more credit card debt than anyone in the U.S. is available to settle your debt, too. You may reduce your debt with one low monthly program payment. If you call right now, Freedom Debt Relief will show you how low your monthly program payment could be for free. Call now. 1-800-399-1993. That's 1-800-399-1993. If you're struggling with debt, this could be your answer. And the bigger your debt, the more money you could save. To find out for free how much of your hard-earned money Freedom Debt Relief could help you save, call now. 1-800-399-1993. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact i believe like i said uh, a lot of where i am now is due to listening to free talk live you changed my mind on some very important issues years ago to random people tuning in on the radio i was kind of stuck in the left right paradigm i heard your show by chance on a saturday night from there i went on joined the free state project and become an amplifier so i mean that's really the reason why i amp is uh because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. 
This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever you want here, live. You're free to talk. It's Free Talk Live (laughs) with Mark. And Johnson. 855-450-3733. You can get Bitcoins by going to expresscoin.com. They make it easy for you to get lots of cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, Dashcoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and... Dashcoin? There's a new one. That is Darkcoin's rebranding. Interesting. Um, they make it uh, easy, safe, fast, and inexpensive. They are a licensed money services business, so you know you don't have to worry about the feds coming after you. Get your uh, cryptocurrencies with a money order or a check. Just start off at expresscoin.com. It doesn't matter whether you're you in the U.S. or Canada. Um, they even have an app, too, so... Makes it easy from your smartphone. Use the coupon code FTL to get up to forty dollars worth of your cryptocurrency of choice with no fee at expresscoin.com. You just use the coupon code FTL at expresscoin.com and you can get up to forty dollars worth with no fee at all. When you do get more than forty dollars worth, the fees mitigable. I've used them on many occasions. Find them to be a great service. Expresscoin.com. Let's go back to Jeff. Calling in from I believe West Virginia, if I remember correctly, Jeff. That's me. Yep. So you were asking what we sort of thought about how to make the campaign funding laws better. Is that right? Well, it it made me a little bit leery. I wanted to add, yeah, it's about citizen-funded campaigning and elections, but it seems to be, at least from what I saw, to be more of a progressive movement, which makes me very leery. As far as you know, where 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 this whole thing is actually where they're wanting it to lead. Um, well, but, they want to have less power in the hands of corporations, lobbyists, and politicians in this area, and I'm for that. The problem is, is that um, I I have yet to hear this uh, system that is going to really that that convinces me. Oh yeah, that will get the money out of politics and fix things. Um, right. At this point, I, I'm at the um, I'm you know I'm going to take the Alexandrian solution, which is to say, um, this knot that you wish to untie, let's cleave it in half. Um, <laughs> that's the Gordian knot uh, right. story, and I'm for that. I would love to hear something. Here's my best shot at it. My best shot is is that um, anybody can spend any amount of money they want on running a campaign, except an incumbent. An incumbent should have done a good enough job that an informed electorate right. <laughs> would be able to make a decision based on their uh, voting, uh, uh, you know, their, their voting record. Now, the getting that past the incumbents in office <laughs> is impossible, right? So that's all I got. The only thing I can think of is that they're trying to pull the money out of us, and that's that's where I was kind of wondering how that would follow the uh, the libertarian train of thought. Well, obviously, um, you know, t- telling, <laughs> having us fund it is, you know, forcing people to f- uh, pay for, um, you know, campaign uh, advertising is silly. Um, is, is, and there are a lot silly. of libertarians that just won't vote, period. You know, like they voting is just, immoral well, yeah, and just, a waste of it's time. It's violence, you know, it's, yeah. it's a step yeah. up. You know. So I don't think there is a libertarian solution to this one other than. Uh, the government has too much power. Some people will um, offer the term limits as a suggestion, but I would counter that with, uh, you know, there are states we have term limits to look at. I believe Ohio has term limits, and all the uh, little critters, uh, the little politicians, what they do is they just move from place to place. They use the name recognition they got from being a rep to now being a senator, and then uh, you know taking it to the governorship or the state senator, whatever it is that they're doing. 
So they bebop around and finally land in a federal position where there aren't any term limits. The term limits also give them the ability to basically do whatever the hell they want um, in their last term. Not to say they don't do that already. I think that that's the, the weakest of my arguments. But um, they're going to go on um, after they, you know, after they've served their time. Most of them are getting out and taking sweet jobs in the private sector in exchange for the votes they had in the past. Basically, they're, you know, they're they're mailing it in. They're they're going golfing whenever they feel like it. They've got an <laughs> office for going to the work when they want to get away from the wife, and it's just, uh, you know, it's just a payoff. Right. All right, folks, stay strong. I appreciate it. Thanks for the call, Jeff. Take care. Eight fifty five. 450 free. It's 855 450 3733. Let's go to Dax. Calling in from Dallas. Dax, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Mark. I have a question about your view on the death penalty. Sure. What about Johnson? You don't want to hear, hear so, about him? <laughs> no, no, yours. It's because it was your argument. So okay. Would you have a different opinion if in a stateless society or a libertarian society? If so, it, it, having to do with the state um, enacting the death penalty. Yeah, yeah, I tend to think that uh, in many cases it's uh, so. If you're talking about a, a stateless society, you're talking about a society where the government um, isn't involved. Sure. Uh, you know, forcing me to essentially be involved by proxy, I'm have a less of a problem with it. But I still think that it's inefficient in many ways. So um, you're. You're certainly talking about, uh, you know, there, there wouldn't be the amount of appeals. You'd have whatever um, arbitration you'd have, and then that's that. But it disincentivizes people from telling the truth. Um, we never know whether somebody actually, we often do not know whether somebody actually did it or didn't. There are people being released from death row all of the time because they were convicted on crappy evidence. And, you know, we have to assume that people have been killed in the United States, Um you know, with bad evidence. So, so the, what about what about beyond a reasonable shadow of a doubt? Let's say there's well, that's what the court system's supposed to be in the first either. place. I mean, that's what we have. Beyond a reasonable doubt, these people killed somebody and they were convicted and then found out later that it wasn't true. Yeah, my thought is in a libertarian society, the only way that you would ever have a death penalty is because uh, the criminal who committed whatever crime says. You know what? I agree with you, family. Um, I think that I should be killed because that's what will make you whole. Wouldn't it be better for the family <laughs> if the uh, if if the murderer? Let's. Um, this is generally what we're talking about with death penalties. Um, if the murderer was sentenced to hard labor and the fruits of their labor were given to the family, uh, the victim. I mean, wouldn't that be better for everybody? That's preferable. I would, yeah, I would agree with that. I would prefer that. I mean, you know, turn it, send them, give them a job turning big rocks into little rocks and whatever that's uh, worth. Um, then you know the if besides what it costs to keep them in a shack and a, a little <laughs> hole to poop in or whatever, uh, then fine. Uh, you know that should the rest should go to the family. This is kind of what an arbiter would do. Consider in a libertarian society, far fewer things would be illegal. So you ha wouldn't have the prisons full of these yeah, victimized yeah. crimes. So they would be able to spend more time on issues like this. And that's kind of where it's at. You never really know whether somebody did it or didn't do it. Well, I'm, I keep on saying never. Uh, you often do not know whether somebody did it or didn't do it. And that, for me, is a, a really big issue. You disincentivize them from actually telling the truth if you say, well, if you admit to it, we'll kill you. Uh, you know, it's pretty big disincentive. Uh, sometimes there's videotape and that kind of thing, but, uh, it, you know, I, I don't know. I guess I, I think that it should be better for the family if, uh, if people got paid, you know, if, if they got some kind of check on a monthly basis yeah, from uh, the person who did it. I appreciate the call, Dax. Thanks. Thanks for it. Thank you. 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE here on Free Talk Live. I know. I got radical ideas on the death penalty. You can call in. 855-450-FREE. <laughs> Free Talk Live. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. 
But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products, most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, Cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at Cato.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at LRN.FM. Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450 free here on Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Johnson. 855-450 free or LRN.FM is our username on Skype. You can call in there and yeah, the audio is usually a bit better there. LRN.FM. ProXPN, you need to protect yourself online. Your internet service provider is saving your surfing history. Criminals are sniffing your Wi-Fi packets. Excuse me, Wi-Fi packets. Governments and corporations are limiting what you can see on the internet. And ProXPN.com solves all of that. Simply download the app for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, or even Linux. Just get connected to the internet and you'll be 
surfing right there. You know, download it and give it a shot. You're on, on the way. No more prying, no more spying. One account works for all your devices. No need to have a separate account for each device. Just go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use the promo code FTL50. You'll get 50% off of uh, your the cost of the account. Um, and, you know, no matter how you use it. But for an annual account, that brings it down to $5 a month. Through Let's see. So FTL50, you'll get savings for the lifetime of the account, no matter which premium account you go with. And with the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth with servers all around the world to access and the ability to privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites. And this is important. ProXPN doesn't keep any records of your online habits. You get all that with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use promo code FTL50 and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Let's go back to the phones. It's Tom calling in from New Hampshire. Tom, you're on Free Talk Live. It was one year ago today that the cops down in Cornelia, Georgia, threw that flash grenade into the little boy's playpen. Baby Boo Boo, it's, it, it's only been a year. It seemed like it's been longer it's than that. One, it's one year. Oh, they reached a civil settlement where the government is going to steal lots of inno- money from innocent people and give it to the family to help them pay their doctor bills. Well, I'm uh, glad to but, hear that. Uh, well, yeah, but... Uh, now, as far as the death penalty goes, keep in mind the death penalty statutes usually say that if a human being kills a cop, then the human being gets the death penalty. Yes. But when cops, when cops kill human beings, the cops will just claim the gun fired accidentally, or they make up some story like, like that cop got caught uh, doing down in North Charleston, South Carolina. We're going to have automatically the cop is guilty until proven innocent, even if they manage to smash the videotape that would have proven them guilty. That's why there's no evidence that the cop is guilty. And they have to get the death penalty because that's what a person could get for doing that to a cop. The cop has to get the death penalty for killing a human. I think you bring up an interesting point, Tom. Um, I'm not willing to go all the way with him (laughs) on that one, but I am willing to say that, yeah, you know, um, these like we should have evidence. We should have video evidence. Today is there was actually an article that came out recently about that baby in the crib that had the yep. flashbang. You know that basically blew half of its face off. Yeah. Um, apparently the baby was at fault, according to the police officer that threw the grenade. Yeah. Was, the story right came the out re- recently that it was the baby's fault because the baby didn't get out of the way. <laughs> I'm not joking. Eighteen. Like, this is an actual story. Yeah. Um. So I think that. Police officers, um, when they use deadly force, when they have successfully use deadly force, need to face a trial. Um, at you know, I mean, it basically, if you can, you know, right? Like, if, if they're going to be exonerated, fine and dandy, no problem. Let's just have a trial. You need to have video, or at the very least, if they don't have video of it, they need to face a trial. Something needs to. There needs to be some kind of full-on deterrent here uh, because obviously there isn't one 1400 shootings last year um, of police of citizens and that puts the u.s well above western nations um you know the rest of the western nations and that's uh that's disturbing that's a very disturbing trend even if you compare us to canada who doesn't exactly isn't known for its uh, liberal police force by any stretch of the imagination You'll still see that it's well over two times as many shootings. You can't claim that Canada doesn't have some kind of uh, diverse population. If you do, you don't know anything about Canada. They have a very <laughs> diverse population. So that's not it. It, it. There's just no good reason why police in the United States need to be shooting as many people as they do. Let's go to, looks like H. Reardon in Tampa Bay. <laughs> H. Reardon, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Mark. How you doing? All's well. Okay, I called to talk about the death penalty, and one thing that I never hear people mention is that there have been prison inmates who have committed murder while in prison by murdering another inmate or prison guard or what have you. If someone is in prison for life and they commit murder in prison, they're already in prison. There's nothing more you can do to them. So you're really giving that individual a license to commit murder while they're in prison by not having a death penalty. Well, they do have um, increased levels of confinement. Um, like they have, uh, I wouldn't call it a license, right? Like so um, in California, for instance, they have this uh, SEG uh, unit of theirs where people are in for many, many years. Um, and 
you could conceivably have some larger uh, form of of incarceration. Like death row is a form of incarceration above regular incarceration, right? Like they get put in a little cell and they get to walk around one hour a day or one hour a week. Yeah, but they are, they are on death row, though. Right. That well, is the but case nobody – I'd be willing to bet nobody has ever killed anybody from death row, Right. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Okay, well, I'd be willing to bet, but I, I could mean, be wrong. I, I would, I would say, I would say it's extremely rare, but yeah, because they're in an increased level of confinement. What I'm saying uh, is, is that you would not uh, get an increased uh, that that yes, there is still a deterrent because there are still increased levels of confinement that one can get. I spent eight and a half years, or I'm sorry, six some, six years in um, Florida's most dangerous prison, but it was only a level three. And it was only most dangerous in incidences of the violence as opposed to the types of violence, right? So there was nobody killed there um, while I was there, but they had a lot of fights. And it was a younger person's prison, and that's why. Um, when the older guys fight, they kill each other. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, you can move them up from a level three to a level four institution or a level four to – I think level five is uh, – uh, uh, death row i'm not 100 percent sure on that but they have increased levels of confinement so i see your point that you're giving a license uh, a lifer a license to kill but i met a lot of lifers and they didn't really have a lot of reason to do that well you, you never know i mean it has happened yeah it's, i'm sure it has for, yeah the, the guy that killed Dahmer. and another thing i wanted to mention was this idea that you know some people think that life in prison is actually harsher penalty. But if that's the case, then how do you explain the fact that there are people who have committed murder who have agreed to plead guilty in exchange for life to avoid getting the death penalty? Because uh, because people jealously protect life, even though uh, right. we don't know necessarily whether, uh, you know, whatever goes on after death, right? Like we're all, there's, there's a whole big debate on that. And it could be conceivably better uh, than life in prison, right? Well, what I'm saying is that I hear you, the inmates yes. themselves— they, they would see, prefer see. to be alive, yes. Right, right. They because, see the life in prison as the lesser of the, the punishment. Yeah, but I don't think that that's a good argument for that. What I'm saying is is that people don't really know what's best for them necessarily, and especially you're, you're, you're saying that a bunch of, convict, you know, a bunch of well, convicted killers are the best ones to judge who, uh, you're also what the worst penalty is. self-selecting. That's a self-selecting— um, sort of uh, statistic there by saying that the majority of inmates tend to argue for life in prison because the inmates who are willing to die uh, tend to die by cop. You know, they're, they're going to be the type that are going to be like, well, I'm not going to prison. Yep, they do they, that. They've kind of self-selected them out of your statistic there by, you know, getting themselves killed. Because if they're willing to die, they're, so the, they're not going to probably just want to do it in prison. They're going to go out and The suicidal ones have already killed themselves by uh, running out in front of cop bu cops' bullets. Yeah, pretty much, I would guess. Mr. Reardon, thank you for the call. 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Interesting points. Some of the best I've heard. But I don't hear many. Most people... <laughs> Most people don't want to argue these points. 855-450-3733. We're not supposed to talk about politics and polite company. No, this isn't polite company. Call Free Talk Live. 855-450-FREE. We're not polite. The Atlas Society's Atlas Summit is just around the corner, June 18th through the 21st, right before Porkfest in Nashua, New Hampshire. Connect, grow, have fun with longtime objectivists and people just learning Ayn Rand's philosophy. There are discounts for students, locals, and one-day rates at atlassociety.org. The event is jam-packed with speakers. Come and be a part of the most important objectivist event of the year, the Atlas Summit, June 18th through the 21st, Nashua, New Hampshire, atlassociety.org. 20% off with coupon code FTL, atlassociety.org. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Are you suffering from EP? 
The symptoms include fraudulent charges to your credit card. Your subway card says it's empty, but you bought it yesterday. Someone's been in your hotel room, but the desk clerk says they only show you entering the room. These are signs of EP. Electronic pickpocketing. Payment cards, transit cards, even hotel room keys. Use a radio chip so you can just wave your card at the register, the turnstile, or your hotel room door. But what's convenient for you is also convenient for thieves. Waving scanners to electronically pickpocket you without even touching you. The good news is there's a cure. ID Stronghold has created leather wallets and clutches that have built-in EP protection. Layers of shielding material cleverly concealed in a beautiful leather wallet that stops the symptoms of EP. Go to IDStronghold.com now and get the cure. IDStronghold.com. Warning, ID Stronghold wallets could lead to feelings of safety and security, comfort in crowds, and euphoria. If you experience these emotions, immediately inform your friends and family about IDStronghold.com so they can feel better too. Sources close to area man Michael Huesmer confirmed this week the unmotivated 29-year-old loser continues to waste his time living a contented life in his hometown near his closest friends and family members and has no intention of leaving. Former classmates told reporters the directionless bum has no ambition to leave his close-knit community for an expensive and stressful life in a big city and is apparently satisfied with remaining a pitiful nobody for the remainder of his unassuming existence. While most of us with dreams got ourselves dingy apartments and soul-crushing jobs in the city, years ago, Michael just stayed behind, happy to live his humdrum existence of regular contact with his parents in a town of people who express genuine appreciation for his presence. Honestly, it's pathetic. In the time it took you to watch this video, you could have read one of Shakespeare's sonnets, listened to an etude by Chopin, or taken in one of the masterworks from the golden age of Dutch painting. The Onion applauds your excellent taste. For more, keep checking TheOnion.com. This is The Onion News Network. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. You can call in and talk about whatever you want to talk about. We're talking about the death penalty right now. Looks like Nebraska, the first conservative state in decades to repeal the death penalty, has repealed the death penalty. So um, I, I'm, I'm a little surprised. This is from NBCNews.com. Uh, they're quoting here this uh, this gal, Sherry Silberstein. She says, Americans have been moving away from executions for more than 10 years, but now we have a red state turning that trend into law for the first time in 40 years. She's the uh, executive director of Equal Justice USA. Nebraska has shown the nation what happens when you put aside partisan politics and embrace simple common sense. The death penalty was already on its last legs. It is on its last legs. I don't think anybody out there can argue that, that there are many, many states, double digits states out there that have uh, gotten rid of the death penalty entirely. They just don't deal with that problem any longer. Um, a caller just called in, made what I thought to be a pretty good point, that you give lifers essentially a free reign to kill people in prison. Yeah. But let's look at, I mean, is that happening? I don't know the yeah. answer to this, but it doesn't seem like that's happening in any more regularity in these states that have the death penalty than the ones that don't. I don't know that that's a good point. I mean, like you said, it's, there's different levels of segregation and, and 
I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I can't imagine an inmate would uh, get away after killing a uh, officer in prison anyway. I was in prison for eight and a half years. I kind of know that there's a, there's, a, there's a system of government in that place already. The, there's a second set of books that we don't get to hear about. Anyway, um, the legislator's decision tests the true meaning of uh, representative government, says uh, Governor Pete Ricketts. And that's true since they veto- vetoed his uh, ruling. Um, a bill to end capital punishment has been put forth in Nebraska's unicameral legislature every year, but this year a growing movement of conservatives who oppose executions gave it momentum. I guess I'm one of those. I guess I'm a conservative that oppose, opposes uh, uh, execution because the issues that I look at it on are conservative. I don't right. look at it from a liberal standpoint. I'm not saying that God loves everybody, and even if the, even if they're a terrible murderer, they have that which is of God in them. Look, I go to I've gone to these anti-death penalty things, and I've sat with the Quakers because I am a Quaker, but I don't talk. I I'm a, also an elected Republican, and I don't talk to legislators like a Quaker talks to legislators. I talk to them like a Republican talks to them about it, and this is about a whole bunch of money. That's spent on these uh, uh, these people getting appeals. It's it's um, you know the not knowing exactly for sure in most cases right. whether or not the person committed the crime because you just don't know for sure. And the government cases. certainly can't be trusted to know that. Juries certainly can't. They've been right. they've been sending people to death row that are innocent. Uh, you know, all the time they right. do it all the time. Um, and, and this system is pretty terrible. You know, when you consider that, hey, somebody innocent might just go away for the rest of their life. You I know, think the, DNA helps. Like you get people who are completely, like, in some of these things with the DNA testing that people have gotten off, it's like, oh, well, that person had nothing to do with the crime. They just happened to be black. Or, you know, like, you know. It <laughs> so, happens. You know, it's just like, oh, okay, completely innocent people who had nothing to do with the crime have been being thrown away in prison and in many cases in the past killed. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So it's, that system is just terrible. That an innocent that could happen to an innocent person. I mean, just put yourself in those shoes. You know, uh, s- right. men well, just come in and just kick your teeth in, and you know, drag you along the ground with you know handcuffs behind your back, and tell you that you murdered a little girl or something like that. And oh, guess what? I didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, but yep. but you're going to be killed by the government. You're going to be killed by by your government. Right. So any story that you have about, um, and that's actually uh, a really great point. I should uh, get back here and read this little bit from this other legislator. Joni Craighead says uh, uh, she backed the death penalty. She asked opponents to put themselves in the shoes of murder victims' families. Well, Joni, put yourselves in the shoes of people who are innocent people who are convicted of uh, murder. What if someone you loved dearly was brutally murdered? What if somebody you loved dearly was put in prison for a crime they didn't commit? If you can honestly say that that situation, that, um, sure, uh, that murderer can live their life in prison, then you're truly a death penalty opponent. I respect that, but I don't agree with you. So, you know, many times these conservatives that support this, and liberals too that support it, they aren't thinking about... The fact that the government makes mistakes all the time, the jury right. system, it may not be entirely broken. You can call it the best in the world if you want, but you certainly can't call it foolproof. And this is, you can turn around a bad life conviction, you know, or a bad life sentence. You can turn that around. You can let somebody go. Ask any of these guys who got out of prison if they feel better having been left out of prison. Then ask all the dead people that were killed that were innocent how they feel about being brought back to life. Oh, they can't do that because they're dead. That's the problem with the death penalty. We should just have a ward of our prison where we tell them that the uh, government is not allowed to send them anthrax. (laughs) And then they'll just accidentally send it. The repeal comes at a moment of turmoil for the death penalty. U.S. Supreme Court is poised to issue a major decision on lethal injection um, that was used, the drug that was used in several botched or troubled executions in states across the country were having trouble obtaining the chemicals. Senator Dave Bloomfield suggests the repeal would be short-lived and that uh, legislation would be put forth in the next session to put, um, put that on the ballot. But death penalty opponents hailed the vote as a harbinger of change beyond Nebraska's borders. I would agree. I think it's, uh, this, this shows that maybe, I hope there will be some momentum to just get rid of it. It's just not worth it. It makes the United States look like such a bunch of knuckle-dragging Neanderthals <laughs> to the rest of Europe, too. And, uh, I mean, what's... Really, is it worth keeping? It's just Florida. 
Oklahoma and Texas who are doing the killing anyway. Right. The rest, the rest of these states, they're not doing it. They just got the death penalty. Right. So anyway, I'm not surprised the conservatives led the death penalty repeal effort in Nebraska. I think this will become more common, Mark Hayden, of uh, conservatives concerned about the death penalty. He said in a statement adding that the death penalty well, violates— Well, it sure makes sense. That's one of the things. It's like, well, hey, finally, conservatives that are doing something that's against big government. Imagine that. Yeah. It's... Actually doing something that's against big government. He says the core conservative principles of fiscal responsibility, limited government, and valuing life— so there you go. Hey, it's consi- it's an actual consistent argument. I I just don't shock. <laughs> I get. I used to be a death penalty uh, proponent. I was actually in prison for murder. There is a, a video out there of me. I don't know if they ever used it or not, but a couple of uh, but a team of a videography team came through and got the murderers and asked them questions about the death penalty. And I said I supported the death penalty because I really did. I was of the opinion that if you've got a bad dog, you shoot a bad dog, right? Like if right. you get a dog that's gone mad, you shoot it because that's the easiest way to deal with it. I get you, and I don't disagree with that, but we're not talking that, – that is not a, an available option when we're talking about the legal system. You don't keep that dog for 10 years in a room downstairs <laughs> deciding whether you're, you're going to kill it or not. Uh, also, I think what's really reprehensible is, is people change. Right. People really do change. Right. I went in prison. I had committed crimes. I went to prison. I admittedly I didn't kill anybody. Sure, but I have. I was there, and I probably could have conducted myself differently. If I would have conducted myself properly, I would have never been in that situation in the first place because I would have never been attempting to get into the drug business. So, uh, you know, yeah, I haven't. I don't live my life that way anymore. Do you think it's a good idea to lock somebody up for ten years and then kill a different person? Their cells have changed entirely right. at that point. They literally are physically a different person. I mean, they got the same DNA, but that's about it. They, they got have some the memories. same memories. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be the same pattern of person. You know, it's like no, over that amount of time. You know, I mean, the only, the, I mean, it's, it's it seems to me like if you're killing somebody who's been in a p- particular place for twenty years, that that's a strong indictment of the system, and, I, and it really is. Yeah. I mean, some of the people, you know, I I do think that. Some people go into prison and it's not, they get made worse. You know, that's like, where, sure. that's where some people go to learn how to be better criminals. Yeah. You know, but, but, but you're not letting them out. Right. You know, um, the, the majority of people, I knew a bunch of lifers in prison, a bunch of them, and many of them were not good people, but they weren't particularly violent. Right. The reason they weren't violent is because they wouldn't get away with it. Right. If they were violent, they were going to get they were going to get in trouble and they were going to get a higher level of confinement and that was going to stink they understood they had the, the you know the carrot and the stick as it were so i you know that's the kind of thing that can be used against uh, violent criminals in prison already for life right i don't think that there's too many um lifers that are running around killing people in other uh, other states that don't have the death penalty so eh. I I just I can't see any particularly good reason other than how would you feel if it was your family member? Yeah, <laughs> and I don't I, I don't want to make, play that down. I get it, but I can ask a, a corresponding question: How would you feel if it was your family member who was wrongfully sent to prison? Right. It, excuse me, wrongfully sent to, to wrongfully executed. Obviously, um, you can't stop innocent people from going to prison if you're going to have prison, but you can stop the death penalty. And at least you can let people go from prison when you find out they're wrong. 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. And now, for Geico's edition of Stuff Found in Your Car, we go inside your side door pocket. Hello, yes, the crumpled receipt with gum in it. From your anniversary dinner, you sprang for expensive wine, your server was Beth. That dinner was a couple hundred dollars. Money you could get back if you switched to Geico and saved hundreds of dollars on your car insurance. I bet you'd save that receipt. Frame it even. But really, where did I go wrong? Was it the corkage fee? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit geico.com today. 
This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Juicy Juice, 100% juice, providing a full serving of fruit in every four ounces. Visit us at JuicyJuice.com. When it comes to nutrition, kids need both fruits and vegetables every day to stay healthy and grow. For the ideal mix, your kids should have at least one and a half cups of any veggie or 100% veggie juice and one cup of any fruit or 100% fruit juice a day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, May 28th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.71 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,188 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $239. Antiwar.com reports Saudi warplanes yesterday attacked the police headquarters in the Yemeni capital city of Sana'a, killing at least 45 people and wounding 100 others. The stricken area, presented as a special forces camp by some reports, was said to be used by the Shiite Houthis to try to organize local resistance against the remnants of the former Hadi government. At the time of the strike, hundreds of people, many of them civilians, were lined up at the warehouse near the headquarters for the distribution of arms. It was unclear what the split was between civilians and combatants. A second series of Saudi strikes in the Hajab province killed about 40 others, mostly civilians in that case. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports the Nebraska legislature abolished the use of capital punishment Wednesday by voting to override Governor Pete Ricketts veto of a bill to repeal the death penalty. The legislature voted 30 to 19 in a bipartisan move to override the veto, which he signed Tuesday. At least 30 votes were needed to override the veto. Ricketts is a staunch supporter of the death penalty, saying it strengthens public safety and prevents convicted murderers from being released into the public. He tweeted that he was appalled by the vote, saying, while the legislature has lost touch with the citizens of Nebraska, I will continue to stand with Nebraskans and law enforcement on this issue. The legislature approved the bill three times, each time with a veto-proof majority before it was sent to Ricketts. Nebraska's unicameral legislature is majority Republican, and the repeal makes it the first conservative state to end capital punishment in more than 40 years. 18 other states and Washington, D.C. have also banned the death penalty. The death penalty has been undergoing some reconsideration in the U.S. within the last several months after states started running out of the traditional drugs used for lethal injection. The Supreme Court is set to decide whether midazolam, an anti-anxiety drug and depressant, violates the Eighth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which bans cruel and unusual punishment. It's the first time the Supreme Court has revisited the issue of lethal injection since 2008, when justices upheld the use of a three-drug lethal injection cocktail. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. 
Reuters reports the U.S. military mistakenly sent live anthrax bacteria to laboratories in nine U.S. states and a U.S. airbase in South Korea after apparently failing to properly inactivate the bacteria last year. The Pentagon said there was no known suspected infection or risk to the public, but four civilians have been started on preventative measures called post-exposure prophylaxis, which usually includes the anthrax vaccine, antibiotics, or both. Jason McDonnell, a spokesman for the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, said the four face minimal risk, adding they were doing procedures that sent the agent into the air. When anthrax becomes airborne, it can cause a deadly illness called inhalation anthrax that occurred in 2001 when anthrax sent through the U.S. mail to government and media targets killed five people. In this case, the anthrax, which was initially sent from a Utah military lab, was meant to be shipped in an inactive state as part of efforts to develop a field test to identify biological threats. Pentagon spokesman Colonel Steve Warren said out of an abundance of caution, the Defense Department has stopped the shipment of this material from its labs pending completion of an investigation. The CDC has launched its own investigation of the mishap. The mishap comes 11 months after the CDC, one of the government's top civilian labs, similarly mishandled anthrax. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. In Baltimore, the streets have gotten safer thanks to the success of the new permanent daylight initiative, which aims to prevent crime by illuminating the entire city 24 hours a day using high-powered floodlights. It's just that it's so bright all the time, even in the rain. City officials say there have been a zero violent crime since the start of the program, except for one man who vandalized the light by throwing his body off a building into it. Now let's set our crosshairs on to Mountain View, California, where Gmail servers were down for nearly two hours today. In an online statement, the company said, tremble before Google with the mere flip of a switch, we can bring you to your knees. After reestablishing service this afternoon, Google changed its logo and released a statement saying, if not appeased with a 20% increase in Google Chrome downloads by the next vernal equinox, they will take back their generous gift unto mankind of colored conversation labeling. All right, you can take off your helmet. You have survived the news blitz. This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live, 855-450 free. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever's on your mind here. This live edition of Free Talk Live, it's Mark with you. And Johnson. 855-450 free. We have been, uh, well, I guess the last hour we basically talked about the death penalty most of the time. Uh, lots of calls in on that one. But um, another controversial thing that's going around with uh, Memorial Day and uh, this uh, flag-stomping craze that uh, the kids seem to be into is, uh, you know, you know it's, it's sort of relevant, this, this patriotism topic. And one of the things you'll he- often hear that is, is that essentially you've got the troops to thank for your freedom. Sure. And if, it weren't for, if it weren't for our military, you'd be speaking German right now. Well... <laughs> I, and I think that that's demonstrably false, but, uh, you know, it, it one certainly can't say that, uh, um, you know, that the U.S. military hasn't had some exploits in the past that have, uh, you know, been positive, right? Sure, I guess. So let's hear this article. Well, Joe Jarvis, this is the author of the article, uh, who's also an author of a book called Anarchy in New England, um, has this to say. Uh, And the title here is Five Reasons It Doesn't Make Sense to Say We Owe Our Freedom to the Military. Unfortunately, the most important issues become controversial, which makes it them difficult to discuss with a level head. Yeah, I mean, when when people react emotionally, it's very difficult to have a reasonable conversation. This is... Here's here's a good way to figure out whether you, you know, you need to re-examine your position is as if you get really emotional about it. Right. You may be... You may still be right. But you need to re-examine your position. Yeah, and there are a lot of folks, too, where their family members and whatnot have died. Yeah, like that's going to really... And they just, their brain cannot process anything outside of the military being a good thing because they have to defend the notion that the military is a good thing because the idea that their loved one died not... In vain. Yeah, in vain, basically. is too horrible. Their brain has to protect them from it. I mean, literally, some people might be damaged by that 
thought getting through. For the whims of politicians in Washington, D.C., um, that, uh, you know, your loved one died. Yeah. I mean, you might come to the conclusion that the U.S. military's presence in Vietnam was necessary right. in order to prevent the spread of communism, even though after that, the there's, politicians there's... basically let uh, Vietnam go and communism didn't spread, showing that the Vietnam War, all those deaths in it were, although many valorous deaths there and, and you know, people that you know might have had all the right reasons and all that other stuff, essentially there was no particular value for virtue in those deaths. I'm not the right person to to. I made a recommendation in the past for of a book, and I tried to get it uh, Ian to read it because I think he is the right person to sort of formulate and, and get uh, points from this particular book. But uh, Vital Lies, Simple Truths: uh, The Psychology of Self Deception is a book that's kind of about these this sort of principle that um, people protect themselves. Uh, you know, protect their brains from sort of, I mean, there are actually thoughts that can be physically harmful to your health. And I think that um, people, you know, their brains prevent them from even experiencing certain thought patterns at all. This is like, they just, they protect themselves. Like it's, it's sort well, of like everybody, what, most people do this. I think everybody does right. this to some extent. The classic example I, I've always saw from this book is mommy and daddy. Essentially they beat me because they love me. You know, like people are not capable of thinking outside of that particular box when they get a certain level of abuse for the most part. I mean, certain certain people are that are strong. But I mean, if you get into one of these particular thought patterns, your brain is protecting itself by saying this is why they do this, because they love me, because the thought uh, that, hey, maybe that's not the reason why they're beating on you all the time is could be physically damaging. Like the stress of that situation is too much for some people to handle. Well, I think you could, I mean, okay, so lots of parents, uh, uh, you know, use spanking f way spanking too often. Spanking is different than a full-on beating. Okay, but, fine. You know, like, uh, they're, it's they're probably still bad. Yeah. Parents that beat, um, that love their kids, it's just that they were taught that that's the way you do it. Right. And, and, so and there you are also have... studies to say that spanking, by the way, actually is mentally damaging. That the very active spanking, yeah. the very active spanking, even a little bit, can be I have not it, seen any study at this point that has shown me that a little bit of spanking, you know, a few instances of spanking actually changes anybody's life. I have yet to see that one. Well, the the studies That's that what I've, these spa the anti spanking that advocates right, especially want the you. especially the repetitive ones, especially yeah. the repetitive spankings can lower a child's IQ. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and who knows what maybe even a few instances. But the one thing that we don't know about that I don't want to get too far off a topic here because we're reading the uh, sure. five reasons um but one thing that you you never sort of see is is that what um, you know are the people are the kids that are getting spanked all the time in lo they're usually in lower socioeconomic brackets right um, are we talking about people who wouldn't have had very high IQs anyway I don't know yeah I think that the, some of the tests have controlled for that by testing I, the same I, kids I recall something like right. that yeah so at any rate you know again I th these are ideas you know the ideas that are going to be presented you know and some of the ideas about you know owing our freedom in the military are. Ideas that require people's brains, in some cases, to just defend them mindlessly. I mean, it, it, without really thinking about it and without being logical about it, they just defend it because it's like it's too horrible of an idea to to accept otherwise. The greatest gift of God, if you believe in God, is that He gave man rationality, and if you don't use it, it's an affront to God. Yep. Well, he says, goes on to say, I'm not trying to offend anyone, though I'm sure some will be offended. The subject, however, is too important to shy away from, so I hope you will give it some rational thought. The problem with thanking the military relentlessly for protecting our freedom is that people might start to believe it is true. If anything, the military is ordered to do, if anything the military is ordered to do becomes protecting freedom, then you disagree with the American military deployments then you are against freedom if you if you disagree with military deployments. Um, right, and that's really what it comes down to is, is that it, I, it's very difficult to disagree with what they use the military for and still support the troops. I'd right. like to be told how to do that because I have not been able to uh, do that mental gymnastics. Right. I think that you're responsible, whether you're the president or whether you're a private, for your actions. Right. And if your actions are to follow orders to go in and, you know, fight a bad war, then you're responsible for those actions. Right. The politicians would just be a bunch of weirdos 
if people didn't follow their orders. Right. Yeah, this strategy, goes on to say, equates any military action with protecting our freedom, which is clearly a fallacy. Obviously. Yeah. Our freedoms have been disappearing one by one. So even if the military does protect our freedom— When he says freedom, that, does he back that statement up? Um, I don't know. Yeah. You, cause he, I think we, we, you know, average listener here and just from listening to the rest of the show tonight— They're not really disappearing one by one, though. Basically, if you forget well, they're the all TSA, disappearing simultaneously and burning completely out one by one. It's like it, lighting a, uh, a menorah you know, at Hanukkah, and the candles don't burn out all at the same time. They're all burning, but maybe they don't all burn out at the same time. But you know, at some point throughout the night, they're going to wink out one by one. If you remove the Patriot Act and um, and the TSA from the equation, you really have a freer nation than you did in the mid-90s. Um, obviously, the spending of Washington, D.C. is a problem, but I don't ha- I've never had to pay the national debt. It's just, you know, you pay your taxes and then they mess up the books. Go on. Right. Uh, so even if the military does okay, so even if the military does protect our freedom, they aren't doing a great job. We owe our freedom to the military is essentially propaganda statement that allows our government to be aggressive at home and abroad while shifting the focus from the very real threat to our freedom from Washington D.C. Yep. to a much less potent real threat thousands of miles away yep. across an ocean. A hundred percent. And if you disagree, it's not that you hate the politician; it's that you hate my son in the military. Yeah. You hate my little boy who's going in there and doing the patriotic thing, putting his life on the line for your liberty every single day. For your liberty to say the stupid crap that's coming out of your mouth, <laughs> he's fighting and dying. People who have nothing to do with you in the Middle East. Right. People who've never threatened you or me in the Middle East. He's fighting them for your freedom. Right. It's crazy. So his first point. First off. Most founders of this country warned against a standing army and pointed out that a standing army is actually a threat to liberty. But today we equate any action by that army to freedom. And he says, coming, they got a flag, you know. Yeah. He says, coming from the right, I uh, have seen pretty much everyone who worships the military also complain about big government and correctly claim that we cannot trust a single politician. Do they realize it is the politicians who send troops off to war? That's it. 855 450 free. The right loves bureaucrats as long as you give them guns. 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realist, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30%, while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us, and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. 
the successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. You can call in and talk about whatever you want. We're on this controversial article. I'm sure it's controversial to many. The five reasons why it doesn't make sense to say that we owe our freedom to the military. This is a pretty common thing that people say here in the United States. And mm-hmm. Well, I, I, I want to hear this out. I think he's... Uh, I'm, I'm interested in... I want you to repeat the first point here, uh, Johnson. Yeah. By the way, it's Mark with you. And Johnson. 855-450-FREE. If you're looking to get gold or silver, please check out gold.freetalklive.com. We've got some great prices on pieces, rounds, and coins over there at gold.freetalklive.com. And I think you'll be impressed with, uh, with, with the selection and with the pricing. It's gold.freetalklive.com. People want gold for a variety of reasons and silver. It's a hedge against inflation, a barter currency and things in case things go south, or an investment. Check it out, gold.freetalklive.com. Dot com. So he says, coming from the right, I have seen pretty much everyone who worships the military also complain about big government and correctly claim that we cannot trust a single politician. But do they realize that it is the politicians who send the troops off to war? Do they realize that the military and police have always been what big governments use to oppress, oppress the people? Sort of an obvious point in it my is a, mind, but it, most an, people don't get it. It's an obvious point, and um, you know, <laughs> the politicians who generally do things badly when they um, when they order our young men and women into harm's way have always done it for the right reason. What makes more sense? Ask yourself <laughs> this: Which makes more sense? We human beings tend to lie to ourselves to make ourselves feel better about bad outcomes, or we uh, politicians uh, don't make mistakes when they send the troops into harm's way. <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious that yeah. people will tell themselves all kinds of stories in order to dodge the painful truth. Right. And the best I can tell is in many cases, um, maybe most cases of most deaths of most servicemen and women in the United States, and I say keep saying women, but it's mostly men, most of the deaths of most servicemen were pointless. Even when, even if the war itself made some sense, in many cases, uh, you know, looking back in retrospect, you didn't really need that beachhead or okay. <laughs> you know that location, that hill that they gave up and took back nine times. Right. Okay. So his second reason that he goes on is he says, secondly, I care about people in general, and I hate seeing anyone die or be maimed. Blindly repeating that we owe our freedom to the troops. 
encourages more people to make a bad decision. Yeah. I joining mean, the military. Right. The one thing that you can do as a young man, if as a man under the age of 22, basically the only thing you can do that people will praise you, because the fact is, is that men under 22, not known for their brains and good decisions, <laughs> right? Like, I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Yep. I'd have a tend to be I tend to be bigoted against men under the age of 25. That's me. Now, there are certainly some that uh, that I can be proud of, but sure. mostly I'm not. But the one thing that they will not say that you have done wrong in that period of time is go into the military. Right. I mean, some people even second guess you on college. I suppose that's the other thing you can do. Like, you know, I went to college. But all that is is one giant drinking party anyway. <laughs> Depending on the college you go to, but yeah. So he goes on to say, it is not safe to join the military. The pay is not worth the risk. The cause is not noble. No one will claim the pay is worth the risk. Right. He says, remember, the scumbag politicians decide the cause. And the U.S. uh, And another point I'd like to make is is that when we were reading uh, about, you know, we were reading about the military having problems recruiting back in 2006, 2005. Mm -hmm. Um, They were having a terrible time recruiting because the economy was doing really well. When the economy tanked in 2008... The Army hasn't, they've changed their policies again. Yeah. They don't have to recruit the dumb dums like they were at one point. Right. They literally were recruit. you know, they had lowered their standards for IQ. Right. And, you know, then they raised them back up again uh, without any problem because they were getting people signing up. It wasn't right. that big of a deal. Right. So they say, they go on and they say, you know, the also, uh, you know, the, co- the cause is not noble. Remember the scumbag politicians decide the cause and the USA will forget about each soldier as he comes home. Over 20 veterans a day kill themselves. Yep. Many are homeless, and many are battling mental illnesses brought on by their time in the military. Yep. The best thing we can do if we care about the troops is to stop sending them off to die in stupid wars and operations. But how are we going to stop that when we keep pretending that these wars are protecting our freedom? We don't want to give up on freedom, do we? Right? Right. You know, it's this nonsense. He says, which brings me to my third point. Acting like the troops are protecting our freedom prevents proper scrutiny of troop deployments. Lots of people say, I may not agree with the war, but I support the troops. Yet which, when a, I can't figure out what that means. Right. Yet, when a veteran comes back from the Middle East, uh, many thank him or her for protecting our freedom. But the wars in the Middle East are not protecting our freedom. So this attitude, again, makes people assume any act of war by the USA is to protect our freedom, which is pretty much never true. The more people who realize that the troops are not protecting freedom, the harder it will be to frenzy the public into another war. Many people uh, do believe that uh, fighting fighting the Muslims over there is a better idea than fighting them over here. But... The reason that you might have to fight them over here, the reason they came over here well, on that 9/11. nonsense that nonsense about fighting the Muslims and all that is is basically it's propaganda to uh, give a, a reason that dummies can believe that we're somehow fighting for freedom. Like that's a nonsense reason. That's not why this war really started. I mean, there's some really unsavory folks out there. Um, sure, but yeah. we've been over there since the 1960s fighting this exact same war. The United States military has yeah. been um, had had presence in the Middle East in, as as far back as the 40s. Sure, uh, with the introduction of the Shah in Iran. Sure, um, so and it has nothing to do with oil and energy interests. Nothing at all. It's all about <laughs> Islam. It's all about oil and energy interests um, because that's. Why why they want, you know, the United States doesn't care about bad regimes in other parts of the yeah. world. It's interesting how much they care about regime change in that part of the yeah. world. I mean, oh, gee, is it possible that a war may be fight, fought over a global finite resource? Mm, I don't know. And I'll bet you the folks in the Middle East who have um, haven't had their own sort of uh, rule, you know, rule over themselves in a very I mean, centuries because the ottoman empire right. ruled turkey ruled over right. uh that large swath right. region for a long time also then the, ask the your... english wait a second then the english uh you know broke them free and then uh you know they they basically went on to these fiefdoms those people have never had the ability to rule themselves and that could be a real problem turkey's doing fine they've got a democratic government the ones that don't aren't ask yourself this question Why is it that over and over and over again, the foreign enemy that we're fighting in the Middle East has always been trained and created by the CIA? Yeah, that keeps happening. 
over and over again. Yeah. It's because there is no real enemy there unless we train and arm them. It's true. The United States is creating this war fictionally in the Middle East, period, to make people believe that we're over there fighting for freedom. It's, I don't know if I it's think fictional. that's part of it. I, it sure it is. They, the, uh, I think it's the CIA, over resources. I mean, the CIA keeps on. Well, we need look, to keep occupying that area. If they the resources, they just go in and take them over. I don't think that they can without the rest of the world getting involved. I don't see why not. The United States spends more money on their military than every other every other country combined. Uh, maybe they can fight know. everybody else and sell the oil themselves. <laughs> they don't want to do that. A hegemony looks better. We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document? Worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average over 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855-340-SAVE. 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state, or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. And, of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come you to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business. But Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free 
Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. We still have time for your calls. You can actually get us on Skype. The username is lrn.fm. Sound a bit better if you use Skype. Username lrn.fm, 855-450-FREE. It's Mark with you. And Johnson. We've been talking about these, uh, what, five reasons it doesn't make sense to claim that the military protects your freedom? Sure, yep. And I think it's it's something that we need to think about. Like, this is an uncomfortable thing to talk about, but right. it's something that we've got to talk about. Because if you just go on, like, otherwise it's just propaganda. Nobody wants to be just listening to propaganda. Right. Nobody wants their life sacrificed for propaganda, right? right? If you don't ask these questions, you if you don't ask the hard questions, you don't get the real answers. Right. So his fourth reason... He says, in a sense, we are all shirking our own responsibility of defense and praising young men and women for allowing themselves to be thrown into situations which could kill them or debilitate them in the prime of their lives. Many encourage these young men and women to join the military because they will attain glory and be held in higher esteem than they could achieve in another field. Or people claim that they will gain skills needed for work. Without mentioning- Sometimes that's true. Right. Right. Well, but they don't mention that it is more likely that PTSD will prevent them from holding any meaningful employment. I think that's so. Um, I recently had a friend who here in the Keene area, a young man who uh, wanted was passionate about the weather and he wanted to be a meteorologist and he went to the Air Force for meteorology. Right. And he had done some kind of he made some kind of deal with them that he wasn't going to go in unless he was certain he was going to get a meteorology placement right. and so he waited until there was a meteorology placement and then he went off to the military and um, i assume things are at this point he's in boot camp whatever right. whatever whatever passes for boot camp for the air force and they i mean <laughs> now we might get some calls <laughs> <laughs> not not from the marines i can assure you uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, he's he's gone off and, and done that. When you're talking about, you know, that, it's unlikely he's going to get PTSD, right? Like, mm-hmm. the most you could claim is that he is giving military-specific weather to people who are going to go off and do some dastardly deed. But the military is going to get its weather anyway. Right. So I really couldn't figure out anything for this young man other than, okay, we'll make sure they don't give you the wrong placement. Right. Unless they just don't put them in, you know, like they say, placement meteorology and just, nah, we were kidding about that. I did talk to him about leaving uh, the military if they did that. Right. You know, and saying, you know, you can just leave. Right. Keep your, keep your, uh, you know, BDUs with you and, uh, you know, don't change your name. That way you won't be considered to be, uh, you'll just be AWOL as opposed to uh, desertion. Right. Not, not that this is legal advice, but that's my understanding from yeah. a World War II vet who has uh, counseled no many people yeah. on this. Interesting. But basically, if they don't hold up their end of agreement, you're allowed to just leave? Is that what you're kind of no, saying? No, you're not allowed to do anything. <laughs> well, We've had lots of yeah. people uh, call in that have just left the military. But I'm there's saying a, legally maybe it won't be imprisoned. <laughs> there's a difference between desertion and absent without leave. Right. If you still have your uniform and you haven't changed and you're not living under some kind of assumed name, right. then they have a much di- more difficult time claiming that you're a deserter. Right, okay. Well, he goes on to say, really... Um, Uh, America is just lying to a bunch of naive young people in order to get them to join the military and to protect our freedom. Artificial fear manufactured by the government is making Americans throw their fellow human beings under the bus in the misplaced hope that it will keep them safe and free. And he says, fifth, I take issue with the oft repeated phrase, well, someone's got to do it. No, no one has to do it. We would all be more free and safer if there was no military. But instead, there would need to be top of the line, fully automatic firearms beside a cache of ammunition in every single home on this continent where the inhabitants claim to care about freedom. How is any hostile going to invade a land where every house has a machine gun? Asks Switzerland. They're not. Nobody's uh, nobody has uh, successfully invaded Switzerland, as I understand it, not in a very long time. And the United States already has a lot of weapons. I would think that it would be a big savings if the United States just handed out fully automatic rifles to every uh, every person in the United States and said, "You're you're now in charge of protecting the U.S. mainland. We're uh, you know we're going to keep some 
aircraft carriers or whatever within a certain distance of the the shore. But uh, as far as the army, navy, uh, the army and the marines go, we're we're disbanding. He says, we cannot outsource the defense of our freedom. People must care about their religion. Their, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> totally misread that, read that word. People must care about their region, their friends, their family. You can see how I might have thought that was religion, friends and family. Uh, their region, their friends, and their family, enough to take steps to defend them in an emergency. Regions could absolutely, absolutely voluntarily team up to defeat a larger threat. But this means we would not... We will not be able to conquer. We will not be able to invade. And that is what defense means. That is what needs to happen for us to defend or take back our freedom. I realize a lot of people join the military hoping to protect the Bill of Rights and the freedoms mentioned therein. But this is not reason enough to perpetuate the false claim that the military is what guards our freedoms. Especially as we have fewer and fewer freedoms in this country Every day, people are going to tenaciously fight to protect their region, their um, land, that kind of thing. They're not willing to generally go out and fight really hard to get uh, somebody else's land. You can see this with uh, territorial animals. A smaller territorial animal will generally defeat a larger one who is uh, encroaching on his area. Right. At some point or another, they just get so old that they you know, can't defend it anymore, <laughs> and they die. But that's the laws of nature. Yep. So that's the five reasons. That's the total. Again, that was an article by Joe Jarvis. He's written a book, uh, Anarchy in New England. That's now, if you've got any thoughts on this, um, I'd love to hear them. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. This is one of those issues where I kind of imagine, and I hope I hope not, but I kind of imagine that a lot of people heard this and just, again, it's that brain defensive thing. They're like, just I'm, just, the I'm just turning off the channel. I can't deal with this. I've seen people do it with yeah. Free Talk Live. I've seen them turn it off when they um, heard you know, the, the, something they just can't handle um, yep. in their mind. And you got what you have to understand is is that it's also true that older people have a difficult I'm getting there. I know what it's like. I'm 44. Um, there's less elasticity in their brain. New ideas are significantly harder for them. Right. Learning is significantly harder. New ideas to young people, they can play with them and work with them and, you know, it, it, it makes a, it's a lot easier to talk to young people than it is to old people about new ideas. But for me, I need to have that uh, rational discourse. It needs, you, you need to show me when it comes to these claims and the claim that the military protects our freedom. It appears as though what the military does is what the politicians tell it to do, which the politicians, very few would people would argue, those people in Washington, D.C. are vigilantly giving of their time and energy <laughs> to protect our freedoms. I mean, what kind of lunatic says that? That's right. Well, Congress is just, it's their sole mission in life, besides that $174,000 a year, to is to protect our freedoms. The money and the kickbacks have nothing to do with it. They're, oh, you know. And the insider trading, don't forget that part, too. Yeah. Uh, but, but speaking, you know, I, I had this thought the other day. I was totally thinking, just amusing myself with this idea that, uh, you know, people are seeking for minimum wage laws and talking about a $15 an hour minimum wage. And I think that the only reasonable minimum wage, if we're going to be gunning for a minimum, you know, one of these minimum wage raise, uh, minimum wage raise hikes, um, is that the, the minimum wage needs to be $174,000 a year. Because that's what Congress gets? Yes, and then Congress would be making minimum wage, and then that would make sense. <laughs> why, why does it make <laughs> sense? I mean, I get, I get that everybody loves to, uh, to, to match things with I'm sorry, it would, make, it would make more sense. What, what kind of sense would it make, though? Uh, Congress would be making minimum wage. They should be making the least amount of money in the, in the country. I think that the, you know somebody who's in Congress should be making minimum wage. If you want to be in Congress, you should want to be there, not for the money. I would agree with you on that. That's kind of how it is here in New Hampshire. Where exactly. They get $100 a year. Right. 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE here on Free Talk Live.
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Yuvia needed financing to grow her restaurant business, but her bank simply didn't understand. I was frustrated. Yuvia found On Deck Business Loans. On Deck did it for me. I called on Saturday, and I had $50,000 in my account on Monday morning. How about the terms? Incredibly easy. It doesn't mess with your cash flow. On Deck changed everything. This company, On Deck, is going to be there for me. Was it a good move? I'm looking to increase sales probably 30%. Been in business for at least a year with 100000 plus in revenue? On Deck can get you 5000 to $250,000 in as little as one business day. And they're A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau. On Deck has opened up so many doors for me now. Truly, truly, the sky is the limit. I, I'm excited. Apply now at ondecklending.com or call 800-326-5430. 800-326-5430. 800-326-5430. Loan subject to lender approval. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world, so I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. Final segment, Mark with you. And Johnson. 855-450-3733. I don't know why I'm giving out the number. <laughs> Got three calls on the line here. Um, the uh, When you do your online shopping, please do it through shop.freetalklive.com. We get a little spiff there. We've got Amazon. It's uh, Doesn't cost you a thing. Doesn't cost anything. You get the same prices, the same service, the same shipping, the same everything. Uh, we have several I've retailers. I've tried to get Ian to say that over the time. He's like, you know, it's the same great price. I'm like, 
you tell people that they don't lose anything by doing this. Mm. You know, make that super clear. Hey, you go shop there. Free Talk Live, you know, he's like, Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sale. Well, that kind of sounds like Amazon's somehow going to raise the price so that the, you know, the, the buyer is going to somehow be paying an additional fee that Free Talk Live is going to get. No, you pay nothing extra. Amazon gives Free Talk Live money. There you go. Shop.freetalklive.com. Make it easy for you. Get your friends and family to do it, too. Yeah. We could use the help shop.freetalklive.com we've got actually over there amazon walmart new egg um you know other other links too, other retailers shop.freetalklive.com let's go to ryan calling in from west virginia ryan you're on free talk live hello thank you for taking my call guys sure hey just want to say that uh you know throughout the last seven eight years i've just noticed and been noticing in a more listening and frightening manner that uh how cronyism has become uh, you know, very trough-like and how it benefits, you know, special privileged, uh, special privileged people and entities at the expense of the masses. I'm sorry, wait, what, what did you say there? It's been, become very what? Um, it's become very trough-like in its effects of how it, you know, robs from the masses and right, okay. gets the privileged entities and people, it, you know, in a way that's um, um, just not only unfair, but um, it gives them immunity to free market forces and an unfair leg up in productions and ability yeah. to be and, and just everything from, you know, TARP to GM through Obamacare and the export import bank simulating global trade by giving those privileges into these special hand ups or handouts. Um, it's just frightening. And, and you see like what Frederick Bastion and Frederick Hayek warned about with, you know, plunder extension. And um, also with Frederick Hayek warning about, you know, the loss of the delivery due to too much government planning. And it's just, it's just, it's like frightening and elucidating at the same time. And, um, I just uh, see that as a the, one of the biggest hurdles, you know, for the next not only the next, next election, but just for the difficulty know, is is sort of showing people where this happens. I'm not saying it doesn't because I think it does. It's pretty obvious to look at and see the results and see that, mm -hmm. huh, looks like the uh, rich folks have uh, control of the system and they're uh, managing to twist it for their own ends. Oh, surprise, surprise! Yes. That's never happened in the course of human history. <laughs> um, but I don't know, like, there's. it's very difficult to point out and say, you see this law? Because all of it's kind of wrapped up in regulation, and it's so boring to look at and read that, uh, I mean, you know, like, I don't even know how to go through and pick it out. Exactly. And, and my thing, too, is, um, like, I'm more of a classical liberal, liber modern libertarian, and I, I see how Brother Bastiat warned about how plunder when used as a tool, of, or excuse me, when plunder was used as um, a tool, you know, to gain at the expense of the masses. Um, it's just something where positive rights, I think, have destroyed political economy in, in that they've went, gone to the extent of taking from people's negative rights and that, you know, there's violations of life, liberty, and property in ways that benefit uh, a privileged few. And that's, I think, one of the biggest problems. And it's, it's, it's like you said, when it's wrapped around law, law, law and regulation, it's just so hard to beat the system. I mean, laws compile and compound at every level, federal, state, local, and it's just so hard to reverse those. It's like a, not a needle in a haystack, but a needle in a hay still chance of reversing those laws. It's like it has to crash and burn, and, and then you can start over. I don't know, Ryan. I wish no. I had an answer. Thanks for the call. 855 four, I'm giving out the number again. Yeah. I want Every to talk about positive rights real quick and just explain for, for people what they are. Positive rights are rights that require something from someone else. So if you have the right to an education or the right to, uh, you know, go to college or uh, yeah. get medical care. That's a positive right. A negative right is something that comes from the inside of you. So the right to free speech, the right to a religion, all these things come from inside of you and they require nothing from anyone else. Right. I just, I, you know, my point is sort of dumb um, <laughs> comparatively. Great. But uh, every time I hear that word cronyism, I think of this, there's a YouTube series, this like cartoon, little cartoon series called The Cronies. I don't know if you've ever heard this or seen this. No, but it sounds dumb. You've got it. No, it's, it's actually, it's actually brilliant. Um, but it's, uh, and I guess the point I'm making is it's kind of goofy because it's a cartoon, but uh, I recommend everybody search K-R-O-N-I-E-S, The Cronies. There's like a four different little cartoon videos that are styled after sort of 80s cartoons that are just making fun of different types of cronyism. Interesting. They're hilarious. Hilarious. Let's go to Robert in Vermont. Robert, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey, you guys were talking a little while ago about um, you were disappointed in some of the some of the decisions that our politicians make. 
And I, I've always, because you know, I'm I'm a little older than you are, Mark, but mm-hmm. not by much. But I've, I'm a person, I've never voted for anybody at all because it's like, you know, they, they tell you that what you want to hear. And nine times out of mm-hmm. ten, you know, either they've lied to you or they, or they just won't do what they say that they're going to do. It's like the definition of, po- of the word politician. My favorite is Obama. Yeah. My favorite is Obama's thing when he's like, you know, within six months of getting in office, I will bring the troops home, and you can take that to the bank. <laughs> it's just like, really? Okay, no. well, and don't forget the, tra- the transparency of uh, of the administration that we were supposed to have too. Now, with that being said, okay, there is a particular individual that I've been keeping my eye on, and have been for about six or seven years, and that's Bernie Sanders. Yep, okay. you're over there in and Vermont, and I will agree with you on this, Robert. I think that uh, Bernie Sanders is a genuine socialist, <laughs> but he's still a socialist. I appreciate the call. He Thank you. Just, Go ahead. He is a, that, 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 that is kind of a hurdle to get over, <laughs> you know, but I'll tell you one thing. I, 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 uh, I can't find any turn on this guy. Nothing. I mean, he's, you know, uh, uh, exactly who he is. Thanks for the call, Robert. Oops, i got to let you go. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of calls piled up here. Jeffrey in Tallahassee, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how are you? All's well. What's hey, on your mind? I, uh, very good. Uh, I just want to say that if my call drops, I'm way out in the country having to sit out. I have a metal roof on my house. But uh, I was going to comment a little bit on the uh, military situation where you were discussing the uh, where a lot of people are under the illusion that the military protects their freedom and what have you. As a matter of fact, I'm an older uh, gentleman. I'm about 68, have about five children. Uh, I was in the military uh, during Vietnam, and uh, I was a, in the Central Intelligence Division as an officer in the Army. And I can tell you guys something that uh, you, there is a very important factor you guys were touching on. Uh, I was a young man, and I didn't have support from my family. I was kind of out there on my own. But I was an officer in the Army, and I quit when I saw what was going on in Mm. Vietnam. I literally quit the Army, and I had to go before a military tribunal of officers, plead my case. And I did get a uh, uh, I did get to go get out of the army and got an honorable discharge honorable, from okay. Richard Nixon. I'm surprised you didn't get just a general. That would be my would have been uh, my get, guess. Well, well, just a second. Uh, I got an honorable discharge from Richard Nixon. Then they threw me back into the draft, huh. but my number wow. was too high to be redrafted. They but, but you're, back right in, in. you're right in this. You're right in the sense that he, I'll, I'll say one other thing if I can. I know you yeah, guys go right have time to. I sit here and I think at my age and I say, where are the hundred thousand parents who lost fifty thousand plus kids? Where? Why have they been so silent all these years? They lost all those kids for nothing, and why have they been so silent while all these other uh, reciprocal destruction of like beings, i.e., war, continues to go on in this country. I just can't understand it. Where are these people? Right. Where are these parents? Yeah, are I... they ashamed? Uh, is it their pride that they don't want to admit that they encourage their kids and they're gone and they're dead? Why, Why is didn't it... they speak up? Why is it too that when as soon as the Democrat, you know, as soon as Obama gets into office, the anti-war movement evaporated? It's true. It's what happened. I don't understand that at all. The partisanship is well, more important well, you, than the you, anti-war you, movement. You do understand it in the sense that when you guys talk about people get conditioned to believe certain things, and that that is what occurs. And there there are a few pockets of people like you guys and other people who discuss and bring up these things that, uh, for the most part, really people wouldn't talk about. But I, I want to add one other thing. Here, here's an interesting point. Ten too. seconds, Jeffrey. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Okay, the point is is that in all these years, in all the work that I do in the world, this, that, and the other, I have never, not honestly, I have never heard anybody talk about these wars. The only people, and when I say talk... 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Flaming Freedom is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, May 28th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.71 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,188 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $239. Antiwar.com reports Saudi warplanes yesterday attacked the police headquarters in the Yemeni capital city of Sana'a, killing at least 45 people and wounding 100 others. The stricken area, presented as a special forces camp by some reports, was said to be used by the Shiite Houthis to try to organize local resistance against the remnants of the former Hadi government. At the time of the strike, hundreds of people, many of them civilians, were lined up at the warehouse near the headquarters for the distribution of arms. It was unclear what the split was between civilians and combatants. A second series of Saudi strikes in the Hajjab province killed about 40 others, mostly civilians in that case. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports the Nebraska legislature abolished the use of capital punishment Wednesday by voting to override Governor Pete Ricketts' veto of a bill to repeal the death penalty. The legislature voted 30-19 to 19 in a bipartisan move to override the veto, which he signed Tuesday. At least 30 votes were needed to override the veto. Ricketts is a staunch supporter of the death penalty, saying it strengthens public safety and prevents convicted murderers from being released into the public. He tweeted that he was appalled by the vote, saying, while the legislature has lost touch with the citizens of Nebraska, I will continue to stand with Nebraskans and law enforcement on this issue. The legislature approved the bill three times, each time with a veto-proof majority before it was sent to Ricketts. Nebraska's unicameral legislature is majority Republican, and the repeal makes it the first conservative state to end capital punishment in more than 40 years. 18 other states and Washington, D.C. have also banned the death penalty. The death penalty has been undergoing some re consideration in the U.S. within the last several months after states started running out of the traditional drugs used for lethal injection. The Supreme Court is set to decide whether Montezuma 
Zolom, an anti-anxiety drug and depressant, violates the Eighth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which bans cruel and unusual punishment. It's the first time the Supreme Court has revisited the issue of lethal injection since 2008, when justices upheld the use of a three-drug lethal injection cocktail. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the U.S. military mistakenly sent live anthrax bacteria to laboratories in nine U.S. states and a U.S. airbase in South Korea after apparently failing to properly inactivate the bacteria last year. The Pentagon said there was no known suspected infection or risk to the public, but four civilians have been started on preventative measures called post-exposure prophylaxis, which usually includes the anthrax vaccine, antibiotics, or both. Jason McDonnell, a spokesman for the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, said the four face minimal risk, adding they were doing procedures that sent the agent into the air. When anthrax becomes airborne, it can cause a deadly illness called inhalation anthrax that occurred in 2001 when anthrax sent through the U.S. mail to government and media targets killed five people. In this case, the anthrax, which was initially sent from a Utah military lab, was meant to be shipped in an inactive state as part of efforts to develop a field based tests to identify biological threats. Pentagon spokesman Colonel Steve Warren said out of an abundance of caution, the Defense Department has stopped the shipment of this material from its labs pending completion of an investigation. The CDC has launched its own investigation of the mishap. The mishap comes 11 months after the CDC, one of the government's top civilian labs, similarly mishandled anthrax. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. I was doing my regular 11 o'clock security sweep around the perimeter of my house when I noticed a couple of young people having intercourse in the front seat of a car out in the street. So I ran inside and I grabbed my video camera. As you can imagine, I stood in those bushes for over 20 minutes watching these two degenerates grind against each other, and I'm thinking, this behavior is simply unacceptable. Now, if you think this is an isolated incident, you are dead to rights wrong. I have 36 hours of footage to prove it that I have personally collected from sickos just around my own town. For example, I saw perverts having sex in swimming pools clearly visible from the roofs of adjacent buildings, on boats that anybody could see with a telescope, at night on the beaches where they can easily be watched by anyone hiding behind a fence wearing their night vision goggles. It's simply disgusting. This is the Onion News Network. Put the kids to bed. Get them far, far away from your radio. I'm here to corrupt your mind. This is Flaming Freedom, and we are back. Sans Delbert. Yes, we killed him and ate him. And tonight, celebrating uh, 